It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. We don't have no pre-rolls today, so we can get right to it. Yes. Uh, if you're just joining us. Um, or if you're a long-time listener, you know last week we started a formatted show. Oh, yeah, baby. So we start the show off with uh, a segment called Brilliant Idiot. Right. So we uh, salute things that are positively brilliant, and we salute things that are idiotic. Uh, what do you have for positively brilliant today, Andrew Schultz? What was positively brilliant oh. to you in the past seven oh, days? Oh, no, I had, a, I had one. I had one. And, I, you know, it might be the same one uh, that you had. We can uh, have more than one. But, um, oh, here's what was positively brilliant. Okay. Tyson Fury's trainer. Who is the trainer? Who is his trainer? I know it's a new guy. I know he had a new one for this uh, fight. Yeah, Sugar Hill Stewart. Sugar Hill Stewart. Right? From Detroit, I think. From Detroit, out yeah. of the crunk gym. Emmanuel Stewart. Remember Emmanuel Stewart, the you know, famed, you, legendary trainer boxing from Detroit trainer. If you're trying to do something in your life, bro, if you're a boxer. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, shout out to Detroit. Um, and there's a couple videos that catch this. One happened at the uh, press conference, and I mm -hmm. saw another video saw it. So, during the press conference, uh, Andy Lee, who used to be a boxer, uh, under Emmanuel Stewart, but who's also, I guess, working the corner, goes and brings uh, Tyson a bottle of water. Mm -hmm. And then Tyson looks back at somebody and goes, "Is did this come from us? And the person goes, no. And then he hands the water back to Andy Lee and says, I'm not drinking it. And I go, wow. I go, huh, that's interesting. Then I watch another post-fight interview he was just doing in his locker room. And you could see his trainer go, his trainer says, hey, we ran out of water. Don't drink anything else. I don't care who gives it to you. And I never- Is it after the fight? After the fight. And okay. I never considered this shit, but these guys are worth hundreds of millions of dollars, yeah. right? Wilder, every fight is going to generate hundred million dollars as long yeah, as he's yeah, a yeah. champion. If you are the promoter of Wilder and he lost, you might do everything in your power to ensure- Absolutely. That he did not lose, meaning taint one of the water bottles, Absolutely. put a little something in there- and it well, was who tainted Wilder's water then? Because Wilder was looking a little drunk out there. Um, uh, listen, I, I just I, thought it was brilliant, like to be in, like brilliant. instead of getting caught up in the celebration, be like, nah, yeah. we still got to get out of here. You still got to piss clean. Everything's got to be good. Loved it. I think it was brilliant. Um, just the way Tyson Fury fought. I'm not gonna front. I think all of us picked Deontay Wilder. There's only one person I know who picked Tyson Fury. Mm -hmm. His name is Glasses Malone, but Glasses Shouts Malone. Shouts to Glasses, Glasses bro. Glasses has been picking Tyson Fury for five years, even when Tyson Fury was in rehab somewhere as an alcoholic. Fucking Ty Glasses was like, you lucky Tyson ain't there. Tyson will beat all of them. And um, I just like the way he fought, man. 273 pounds. He did exactly what he said he was going to do to Deontay Wilder, oh, which I did, I was like, he's out of his fucking mind if he thinks he's going to press Deontay Wilder. He said it. He said, I'm going to pressure him, and I'm going to try to knock him out by the second round. Mm -hmm. And he actually fought that fight, like, no fear. And I was thinking about this, right? Mm. When he got hit last fight, yeah. he went down twice. Yeah. Clearly, he feels like he took Wilder's best shots, and it didn't hurt him. Right. So he approached this fight with no fucking fear. I think Wilder... First of all, I don't think I still love Bronze Bomber. I think Deontay will be back, but it don't seem like they had any game plan, like whatsoever. Even when they went to the corner, I didn't see like his trainer talking to him or yeah. you know telling him to make some adjustments. It was just like yo, yeah. just 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 get him, just get him, just get him. So it was almost like he was just looking for that one big punch. I think that uh, Wilder didn't game plan for Tyson, and I think that Tyson he felt like Tyson didn't have that power, mm. right? So it seemed to me like he wanted to take a couple from Tyson in order to get that one. He was willing to trade. And I think that trade didn't work out. Well, <laughs> that, well, that trade did not work out. It was, it looked like a man against a child. It looked it like did. a man against a child. It like, did. have you ever like, you have it a younger did. brother you beat up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it looked like. No, that, it when you beat up your younger brother, like there was a time where, where Fury punched Wilder in the stomach. And dropped him. But it wasn't like you get dropped from a body shot. Usually body shot, I've been dropped from a body shot. Only yeah. time I've been dropped in a boxing match yeah. is from a body shot. I've been stunned and shit. But I, what happens is it hits you in the body. Yeah. You take a step back and then you just can't breathe. Yeah. And then you take a knee. Yeah. 
He hit him in the body and he flew like it was a fucking Marvel movie. <laughs> he flew back. By the way, that's he reminded me of a Marvel movie. Remember when fucking Hulk grabbed Loki and he just bang, 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 bang. So bang, that's bang. what Fury was doing that's with Fury Wilder. That's what Fury was doing to goddamn Deontay Wilder. That's during what, Black History Month. Bro, during Black History Month. That shit, that, I'm going to be honest with you. disrespect. I didn't think that I loved Wilder that much. I knew I liked Taylor. Wilder. I knew I liked Wilder a lot. I knew I liked Wilder a lot, right? Yeah. First of all, let me set the, paint the picture for you. Yeah, yeah. It, uh... This could be under the idiotic session, but it's not. We had a good time. Yeah. My daughter had Listen, a chili. We, we tried to have structure. Okay. <laughs> no, no, no. This is, this Are we still bridge. structured? Yeah, we okay. still to, my right. daughter had a chili in competition this yeah. weekend. Yeah, yeah. So we was in Wildwood, New Jersey. Yes. Right? First of all, I totally understand why people don't go to Wildwood, New Jersey. <laughs> okay? And the problem with chili in competitions is they have these chili in competitions in places people really don't want to be. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Salute to Atlantic City. Great town. Yeah, yeah. You don't just go to Atlantic City. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wildwood, New Jersey. Yeah. Great town. I don't think you just go to Wildwood, New Jersey, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's the middle of winter. Everything's fucking cold. You just lost $10,000. You don't want to hear enthusiasm. No. That's what cheer is, right? <laughs> you just lost your house on a game of blackjack. You hit, Let's go! <laughs> Somebody fucking blow this cheer competition up. Everything in Wildwood, New Jersey is closed. We're staying in a nice two-star hotel called the Starlux. Ooh. This is how I know Ooh. that I am a great father, okay? Because I'm looking at this shit a little, just a little, just a little pissed off at the wife, like, Come on, baby, come, come on, on now. We this this yeah. the stuff we trying to run from, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My eleven year old daughter is like, relax. It's a bed. I got a bed. We good. Yeah. We only here for a couple of days. Yeah. I said, well, goddamn, you ain't never been poor. So, <laughs> so this don't bring back no trauma for you. <laughs> this don't trigger nothing in you. This triggers everything in me. But I understand. Yeah. So I'm watching Deontay Wilder on my laptop because, of course, there's no pay per view in a goddamn two star hotel. Of course not. You got a TV with the back on it still. Watching it on my laptop, I told my wife, I said, look. We're going to get us some plastic cups, pint of Remy. If we're going to do it, let's do it like I used to do it back in the let's day. Right? Go. So, <laughs> let's go. Let's so, go. So, so we're drinking out the plastic hotel cups. We drunk. I'm watching Deontay. Oh, and, I love this. You know, me and my wife, we go to fights. Like, yeah. we watch boxing. Yeah. We sitting there like, that's really our family member. Like, Deontay, no. Because <laughs> like, it was a sense of pride when he walked out. He had on the motherfucking Decepticon uniform. Like, the guy he, rapping. I don't on. even know what he was rapping. What was D-Smoke. D smoke. smoke. You said pop smoke. No, he said D smoke. Oh, I'm about to say. R.I.P. Pop smoke. Lord but the pop smoke was dead. And he lost. That would very be really be disrespectful. Yeah, that would be come fucked on, up. Yeah, come you know on, what I'm yo. saying? Damn, Taylor, Jesus he, Christ. Come on, yo. But D smoke comes out. He does this very positive, powerful song. I didn't know. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't I know if he was. I thought somebody just jumped out from the crowd and just started saying, <laughs> "Nah, D smoke won." Black I history, think, black power, black unity. Nah, D smoke won on Rhythm Capricorns. and Flow, the Netflix show. So Say he, what? He won that Rhythm and Flow, the Netflix show. That's like a rap. Oh yes, black you Island. were on that. Yeah, no, I wasn't. Oh, you were, weren't you like featured on that or something? I, I interviewed Chance and Ti. Yeah, before. but huh? Could you put your Taylor, could you put mind your, your lip business, on the mic? Yeah, yo. If you're not going to put your lips on the mic, I'm about to mind break your, your laptop, business. yo. All right? I'm Get trying to go somewhere with this story. Get your baby hairs laid right. I'm trying to go somewhere <laughs> with this story. Man, let's go. He's in By a two-star way, hotel smoking crack with his wife and right. daughter. I thought Deontay Wilder's entrance was positively brilliant. Positively brilliant. I thought both of their entrances were positively brilliant. Love that. I was actually mad at Fury's entrance because in my mind, I'm like, why the fuck they acting like he the champion? Yo, <laughs> like, that's the genius about it. I didn't like he that act shit. like he had the belt yes. and you believed it. Came out with the Patsy Cline. Are we supposed to give linear heavyweight champions that kind of respect? I don't know what we supposed to do. <laughs> I didn't understand that. But I got to say, uh, even with that, I was telling people Tyson Fury wasn't a, he's not a sucker. This wasn't a Ruiz- Joshua situation. Right. And Ruiz ain't no sucker either, but it's not like Fury was an underdog. No, he, he beat him lost. the first round. He beat him the first time. He didn't win, yeah. but he beat him. Yeah, yeah. And, and he didn't... Tyson Fury has never lost. Yes. The only thing that beat Tyson Fury was depression and anxiety yeah. and his mental health issues and then yeah. the substance abuse. That's what beat Tyson Fury. Yes. Tyson Fury came back, got back on his bike, and he fucking... He gave it to Deontay Wilder. I didn't know I liked Deontay Wilder that much, yo. Son, I'm be honest with you. It was difficult for you to watch in it. It was difficult to watch, bro. Because I've never seen. Because Deontay exudes so much power, bro, and so much strength, so much king shit. So to see him just I mean, he was just flopping around the ring. I was like, bro, what the fuck is wrong with it him? It wasn't yo? good. <laughs> it wasn't good. Yeah. What Taylor? What Taylor? Grab the fucking microphone. <laughs> Wait, does that one work? It's too okay. early. It's only the first format. No, I really have a question about it because me and my. Wait, you got to do. Skirt. 
Okay, maybe we need to get to a what a fucking idiot segment since you want to talk about... Go ahead. Yeah, yes? <laughs> okay, yes, go ahead. Tell okay, me. go. So he was saying how, like, when you were saying you were saying your dad hurt about watching... I was hurt. Daughter. Did you make it a racist? Uh, not racist, but are you looking at race? Are you no. If he was light-skinned, you'll feel the same pressure. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, we had this whole discussion about it. Who this, had this whole discussion? Let me tell you something. <laughs> let me tell you something. I never had this discussion with you. He's lucky that he's not light-skinned because the bruises that Fury put on his body would have showed up way more that if he fact. was light-skinned. If he was the beige bomber, oh my he'd Lord. have looked purple. I'm saying because he represents such a dark, like he's a dark-skinned man. He's mm -hmm. so strong and everything else. And like he represents for me like a pure black man. I just think you know that be, uh, and you might, and yo, you might be right. I just think that he exudes so much power, but I'm not. A, he's he's putting thing, too I, much pressure on boxers, yo. This yeah. is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This yeah. is like I, way better figures to look up to. Ali yeah. is the Ali is one of the greatest of black course. historical figures ever, and he lost. Yeah, you like, know what I'm saying. Right. Now here's the other black men, but that's not the case. Black History Month and everything else. So that's what I'm saying. Like a lot All right. of that. I was, I was, I was. I'm gonna be honest with you. I wasn't that hurt because I'm a fan. I like Tyson Fury. I'm a I fan of Tyson Fury. I'm a I fan like, of what he stands for. I like, I like him both. as a person. <laughs> I'm saying. I like them both. I like them both. I'm saying boxing. As an American, I love an American heavyweight yeah. with concussive power. I yeah, don't give yeah, a yeah. fuck. Call me bias. If yeah. you're listening to this in the UK right now, you're proud that you got a uh, UK you heavyweight. Got all the belts. Right? Come That's on. Right. So, but the reality of the matter is Tyson Fury came in. And beat the shit out of Deontay Wilder. He beat the shit out of him. And Deontay Wilder showed a lot of fucking heart. And he got trashed on social media, which is what happens. Like, he shouldn't personalize that. We all go through that. You get that type of fame and you get beat up. You're going to get it on social media. Well, I, no, let's go. This, we can, I think we should be able to go back and forth between the what a fucking idiot segment and brilliant segment. Because I agree with you. Okay, go. I think those people on social media are idiots. Now, I understand that when but you lose. But it's the game. Like, I, I, don't know, think, I don't think it's lack of love. Like, like you, like you, we've all went through things not on, maybe you probably have, but maybe not uh, for me, not on that level. But where something embarrassing happens and then the internet just jumps. It. On it. I'm an asshole to a lot of people. Right. You're an asshole to a lot of people. Do y'all think why ain't never been no asshole to people? I'm not even gonna say the young lady's name, but me and a young lady are really cool. She's from Alabama. And I hit her, I was like, yo, how you feel about you know Deontay Wilder losing? She was like, My mama said he deserves it. I said, why? He don't take care of his kids. I'm like, what the fuck? That's actually not true. Doesn't he have one of his that's kids? That's what I'm saying. I'm like, why would she say some shit like that? But what I'm telling you by saying that is that's the type of petty dumb shit that happens when a person takes an L. Right. Me and Taylor was arguing Monday because right. the first thing she does is come in the studio and go, Deontay ain't shit. I did not Deontay. say that. I did not say that. I'm like, look, I did not say that. a I man not say that. don't go 49 and old or whatever the fuck he was and you ain't shit, bro. Right, right, Come on, right, man. Right. Don't Come on, man. I did not say that. He's I got, say he, I, right. like, just how y'all say he got beat the shit out of him, right? He definitely got the okay, shit beat out of him. so, me saying what I said, I said that I don't think Deontay as good as I thought I wanted him to be because, because. Because of one loss. I, no, 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 no. I'm not saying he's not a good fighter, though. All I'm saying is when I come to, like, the athletes, Tyson Fury showed like he was bouncing around and so energetic. I, I yo, chill. Wait. You're pissing off our listeners, yo. They don't want to hear you. They fucking mad as hell right now. Okay. I let you talk for thirty fuck. seconds. Here's here's Listen. the reality. Here's the <laughs> He's reality. He's not Adrian Broner. Adrian Broner get his ass kicked. I can understand the social media backlash I am, like now that. Now I hear what you're saying. Yes. You felt like it was unfair because he'd literally only done positive things. That's he'd it. only been supportive. And then now the reality is everybody gets these jokes. And I think that's something that the internet shows, especially if you lose in embarrassing fashion. <laughs> jokes are one thing, but celebrating somebody's what you think is their downfall is different, bro. Oh, do you think that there was like a bigger thing at play here? Do it you was think a celebration. Was like, it was like, yeah, like, oh, yeah, he ain't undefeated. Like, it was weird. But do you think there was a bigger cultural thing here? Like, do you think it was like, like... Um, oh, I got it. Go. I have never seen Deontay's successes screamed as loud as his one loss. Meaning that this man has won 49 fights. You don't see people talking about Deontay Wilder like that. You know what I'm saying? Start, think about it. On social media, think about all of the amazing knockouts he's had. We're boxing guys, so we see it. Mm -hmm. You don't see people talking about him, but then when he loses, they're, they're streaming his failure when they used to just whisper his success. But I have a problem so with I it. Guess, I guess my question is like, sometimes culturally I find we do this, right? Like we build someone up when they're the underdog and then when they get really successful, we tear them down. Absolutely. Right? And I don't know if that's an American thing or a human thing or whatever it is, but do you think that's what's at play here? Here's this guy who the second he stopped being the underdog, he was the big bad wolf who blows the house down. Yeah, the yeah, second yeah. he was uh, 
unbeatable. The second he was the most ferocious man in the world, the most concussive man in the yeah. world. Do, do people start resenting that and going, well, that makes me feel insecure because I'm not that yeah, way. And I then do. when he loses, you go, ha, ha, ha. Yeah, You're just so. like me. I think so. I think that when you are so good and you're undefeated and shit like that, you give off this era, this aura of like invincibility, yeah. you know, and I think that it makes people feel like you're back to their level when you take a L. It's the same reason you like to see Tom Brady lose and the Patriots. It's the same reason like... You want to see the Yankees lose. You want to see... You root against Floyd Mayweather shit. every fucking yeah. time. But even Floyd, Floyd's cocky. Yeah. So I can understand why people would want to see, yeah. you know, Floyd lose. Or you root against America. Like every country knows exactly what's wrong with America. That's yeah, why you got yeah, no yeah, health care. Yeah. That's why you got this. Why you got that. Why you yeah, got that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, but yeah. you know, I thought it was brilliant. You know what else I thought was brilliant this week? Um, Michael Jordan. His speech at Kobe Bryant's memorial service. Mm-hmm. Him mentioning the crying me. The reason I that thought that was a bar. The reason I thought it was brilliant because as I'm watching it, I text Lil Duval and I said, "You about to have?" I said, "Michael crime. Jordan about to bring the crying me back." Yeah. And Duval put back a bunch of laughing emojis. He said, "Yo, we assholes." Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then like five seconds later, ten seconds later, he mentions it. Yeah. The reason I thought it was dope is because it's certain things you can't get away from. Mm. Michael Jordan is the Michael Jordan of ugly crying. There is <laughs> nobody on this planet. Who ugly uh, cries better than Michael, Michael Jordan. Jeffrey fucking Jordan? It is yeah, the weirdest yeah. shit. Like you know how in, in in Glory when Denzel did that one tear and it sat on his face, uh, it's like right. Michael puts out multiple tears and they just go all over his fucking head. Yeah, they don't know like they're do. on his fucking forehead, they under his cheeks, they around his mouth. He and looks then, cummed on. He looks fucking yeah. come on, yeah, bro. It's dude. a glaze. It's a glaze. It's a fucking glaze. And it's like the yeah. snot coming out his nose. Yeah, I'm like, what dude. the fuck? And yeah. they, the, Did you just get blacked? <laughs> 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 Who the fuck keeps on Michael Jordan? <laughs> Let me dunk on your face. <laughs> this is payback. God damn. But that's how it looks. So it's just like, bro, if you don't have a napkin nearby, you got to acknowledge that shit. Yes. Like, and then it's like, I didn't even see him wipe his face. No, nah, he let it go. I and, respect that though. I like bro. that. That's how men cry, bro. Don't be like this. Don't do this. This shit is pussy, son. When you do the windshield wipers off your no, face, now nah, let it let it stream. It's bro. something to that, man. Let it stream. Let dude. that shit go, Let's yo. Go. Yeah. If you let it go, because it, it seemed like after he mentioned it, it just disappeared. Say what? Oh, you it think does. the tears went away? Go back and watch that video, yo. After he mentioned it, yeah. it's like his whole face just dried up. And why? Did we never see Michael cry like that when he was playing? Good question. He never cried. He hit it. He cried after he won the first championship. He hit it better. But he stayed in the locker room with his hand, with his head it like this. covered, yeah. He wouldn't yeah, let yeah, us yeah, see yeah, him. Yeah. Dude, we were having a, co a conversation on Flagrant this week, which, is, which I think was interesting, regarding Michael Jordan. Why he's the greatest athlete of all time. Talk to me. Okay. This could possibly fit into positively brilliant. Okay. Um... He's the greatest athlete of all time because he erased his competitors from the history books. Oh, without question. If you was in Go the Michael, if you was in the Jordan era, they don't even know you exist. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Think about like our Please, kids, right, are not going to know John Stockton, Carl Malone, Charles Reggie Barkley, Miller, only, Charles Barkley. Inside the NBA, say, keeps say, Charles Barkley alive. That's exactly what I said. Yes, hundred percent. Hundred percent. Patrick Ewing, that, done. That whole Enix squad, boom. So you can't compare him to a LeBron or these other guys because no. LeBron has not erased his competitors I agree. from history. I agree. Think about that. That's greatness. And then the other thing I was talking to, um, Tony Hitchcliffe from the uh, Kill Tony show, um, he said it's something interesting. You know what's interesting about Jordan? You can only compare him. When you do compare him, you often only compare him to people who play individual sports. And that's a sign mm. of greatness when you play a team sport and the mm. only people you can liken your dominance to mm. are tennis or golf. You know, Tiger had his heyday. Only reason, I, I get what he's saying, but the only reason I wouldn't make that comparison is just because I don't feel like, and I'm not dissing none of those sports. I guess I am. I don't feel like none of those sports matter athletically. The way basketball does. Right. You know what I'm saying? The way football does. Right. Even the way baseball does. Right. Like, no disrespect to golf and tennis. I just, maybe, maybe tennis more than golf. Tennis give, has athleticism. Tennis more than golf. Yes. 100%. Tennis more the than golf. The biggest knock I would say on tennis or sports like tennis and like hockey is that there's a financial requirement 
same with like swimming. There's a financial requirement Ooh. to enter it. Yeah, you got to so you eliminate yeah, yeah, yeah. all the poor people. And who's the best best at sports? Yeah, poor yeah, people yeah, are the best so at sports. Fucking, that makes so much fucking sense, bro. So it's like Michael Phelps might be the fastest swimmer that we know of. But the real fastest swimmer might be LeBron Cuba. if he grew up with a fucking no, pool. There's Who? somebody in Cuba right now <laughs> that can swim back and forth between Cuba and Florida. Elion Gonzalez. Uh, I'm telling you Sign right, right now. Let's go. Well, I bet you there's a Cuban swimmer in Cuba right now that has been swimming back and forth from Cuba to Florida for years. I bet you he's in Michael Florida. Phelps has. <laughs> <laughs> you got to swim faster than sharks, bro. You know what I'm type of swimming you. that is? Yes. Come on. I bet you. I bet you. But no, I agree. I agree with everything you just said about Michael Jordan. There's um, something there right about like eliminating the com your competition like eliminate from the history books and i bet you could take that out of just sports dude i bet you could take it i, I mean some, that, I some people might say it about you in radio some people might go yo during charlemagne's radio heyday who were the other radio djs or what do you call yourselves personalities personalities that we're spoken about. I'm not talking about the ones grandfathered in. Those people always exist. Yeah, 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 yeah. We're talking about during the 10 years or whatever, yeah, during yeah, the yeah. heyday, who else was mentioned? No one. That's a good point. You ain't wrong when you're right. <laughs> no, right? Think you're, about it. It's wrong, a testament right. of greatness. Yeah. Who else is going to be mentioned during your era? And again, it's not during the entirety of your career. Mm -hmm. It's during your years of greatness. The only reason Hakeem Olajuwon is spoken about is because, say it, you know. Because Jordan retired, and he's really not spoken about, if so, we're being honest. No, but but <laughs> every year, some big man goes in, like, in the offseason, learns yeah, how yeah. to do some moves from yeah, him, right? Yeah, he's always yeah, kind yeah, of yeah. in the conversation. Yeah. Dude, Kenny Smith is only on Inside the NBA because Jordan oh, retired yeah. for fucking two years. That's, no, Listen, you're not wrong. I, I I agree with you. I've, by the way, I've never seen any uh, era of dominance like Michael Jordan. It's unbelievable. I, I, I haven't seen it because this you know, this guy went to the finals three years in a row, retired and went back three years. So it's like you literally had, you know, a, a eight year run where Michael Jordan was always in the finals and not just in the finals, winning. Mm. I know people will sit there and be like, oh, well, LeBron. Yeah, LeBron might have did that in the Eastern Conference. Mm -hmm. But for the whole NBA, it's other people you're going to talk about mm -hmm. when you're talking about the LeBron James era. Yep. You know what I'm saying? LeBron James has his era, but there's other people that will be spoken you're gonna about. You're going to talk about Steph. You're definitely going to talk about Steph. Because he got them rings. Absolutely. You're going to talk about KD. KD. You d absolutely. There's 100%. a lot of guys you're going to talk about. You know who Steph, you know who would be the Steph of that era? Reggie Miller. We'll never talk about Reggie because he never won. Jordan didn't allow that shit to happen. But if Reggie got some rings, we'd, we'd probably call him the greatest shooter of all time. Yep. Reggie, bro. If we being honest, Golden State might be the shit of that era. Now, the reason I give LeBron, the reason I give LeBron the slight edge, because he beat that super team. The 73 and 9 super team that went to the finals five mm -hmm. years in a row, mm -hmm. LeBron beat them once. But he didn't beat the better version of that team, which was KD when KD was there. Like, you can't even be, That's true. you can't even, yeah. It, it's just, put it this way when Jordan was in the league, yeah. no one ever said there was a better team in the league than the Bulls. No. No. So how LeBron's going to be the best in the league? No. Right? Yeah. I'm if there's another team that was better. It isn't. It, I, I think low key, and I'm guilty of it. I think we forget how fucking dominant Jordan was, yo. Bro, we forget how dominant Jordan was because that was in the 90s. Shit is like, we know because we lived it. Yeah. These kids looking at us like, we shot you at your fucking mind. <laughs> Nobody better than LeBron. <laughs> Nobody was better than Kobe. Like, Michael Jordan. That shit is like talking about a, Michael Jordan really is the meme. He's, He's really the crying face You're meme. You're talking about a meme. And think about this, right? Yeah. Kobe's memorial service. Yeah. Now, I got to give Jordan just a little bit of idiot, little, little bit of what a fucking idiot. Okay, go. Kobe Bryant's memorial service. Yeah. Right? Yeah, yeah. You're up there giving a speech. Yeah. These kids don't really know you. Yeah. It's almost like when you fucking, you know, realize that, that Wendy's was a real girl. You know what I'm saying? Oh, no. I mean, okay. Like, because it's a Jordan. <laughs> it's a sneaker. I, I know the sneaker Jordan. Uh-huh. Like, oh, that's a real person, right? Yeah. So he's up there and he's talking. And you give you give the people what they know you for, this generation. What does this generation know you for? The crying face. And that's what you give them, Michael. 
You got to know your audience. You got to know your audience. No, no, no. He did. No, I think that was good. You don't no, think that's possibly no. brilliant? I think. What's he, he supposed to do? Dribble basketball, Duncan? Exactly. He could from yes. the free throw line. <laughs> Come out there, hey guys. Let me show you what Make, I used to do. I, I, yes. <laughs> Make sure you show the start, highlights. Start backing some. When I was busting Kobe's ass in the whole time. You know they showed one. He had one little clip that showed him talking to Kobe. Show the highlights. When I was show what I used to do. Show, show him why I was busting Kobe's ass in the All Star game. All right, because that's how. The, by the way, that's how the speech started. The speech started off on some. I'm, I'm, I'm your big bro. I, I was sunning you type shit. Yeah. Like your annoying little brother yeah, calling yeah. me, asking me, study my moves, yeah, wanted yeah, to be yeah. just like me. Yeah, yeah, I was like, holy yeah. shit! I love it. He's Michael. He's Michael. That's all the time. Michael, yeah, bro. Right. Think, he can't turn he off can't Mike. Call, yeah, he can't turn off Mike. Mike's not an idiot. I'll tell you who is a fucking idiot. Who? Joe Biden. <laughs> is he a senile or is he an idiot? I don't give a fuck. We not give, no, we not. Dementia is not an excuse yet. What? Because if you're smart enough, yeah. if you're coherent enough to run for president, we're not fucking letting you off is on he, the dementia Is he or is it shit. some weekend at Bernie shit? I, I don't know, Someone got to do a weekend at Biden's, like a, a little uh, in, <laughs> like Instagram video or spoof or whatever, because he literally doesn't know what he's saying while he's saying Did it. Did you see him at the South Carolina? It was the South Carolina... Dinner or some shit. Now, what do you say? Play the shit, Taylor. Now, listen to this. This is Joe Biden. On, by the way, people, this is Joe Biden on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> this was Monday. Okay? Listen. Yeah. I'm the president of and the And I have a simple proposition here. I'm here to ask you for your help. Where I come from, you don't get far unless you ask. My name's Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Look me over. If you like what you see, help out. If not, vote for the other guy. Give me a look, though, okay? Okay, now let me tell you everything that's wrong with that, because that might have went over your head. Joe Biden first ran for U.S. Senate in 1972. Right now, he's running for president in 2020 for the third time. Why the fuck did he tell those people that he's running for U.S. Senate? Why? Why? That's not even the biggest issue of that line. <laughs> the biggest issue of that line for me is he said, if you don't like me, vote for the other Biden. Yep. Who the fuck is the other Biden? <laughs> My name is Joe Biden. I'm a Democratic candidate for the United States Senate. Oh God! Doesn't he sound like? Doesn't he sound like one of those people that just got, uh, like their molar removed and they're still on the laughing gas? <laughs> yeah, you yeah, ever yeah, seen yeah, those yeah. videos yeah. where like yeah. the girls kind of wake up and they yeah. start saying wild shit yeah. to the doctor? Yeah. That's what I feel like he's constantly on. They just inflate him full of some laughing gas or some methamphetamines or something. They just give him some talking points, go on out there and do it. I think he's, he's a fucking a clone. Yeah. I think he's a robot. He's a robot, yeah. I think that was a glitch. I think everything we see from him is a glitch. When he yeah. said vote for the other Biden, I think Not there isn't the other Biden. I think there is an other Biden, bro. I think the other Biden is the Biden that they said was the most electable Democratic candidate. Mm. <laughs> I think the other Biden was the Biden they said could beat Donald Trump. Mm. <laughs> and we need to go find that other Biden. Because that Biden, yeah. he ain't the one, bro. Where do you think he is? Shit, with Barack design, uh, creating new Netflix shows. Oh, you think he's yeah. just <laughs> and, chilling? And I think, and I think, once he gets the nomination, if mm. he gets the nomination, yeah, they'll reel the real Biden out. Now you take it home, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> right? you, you take it home. This other Biden, the robot is done. Uh, when, when by the time Super Tuesday comes and they vote, you get the nomination. Put the real Biden out there. Do you think he has a chance? There's no way. He's got all of them have still have a chance. You think? Yeah, because he won. He won. He was well, second place in Nevada. If he wins South Carolina, going into Super Tuesday, he got a chance. Right. Got a chance. And plus, they want him to have it. You the establishment <laughs> wants him. I think the establishment is divided over him and uh, Buddha Judge. I think that they're setting Buddha Judge up for a greater play later. Ooh, talk to me. I just think they're setting him up for a greater play later. I think that they, he, I think Buddha Judge was somebody that entered the race. I'm um, sure he's had conversations with the powers that be, the Illuminati, whoever the fuck. Yeah. And they told him, like, look, you know, this is a good way to get your name out there. Like, you're young, you're charismatic. Like, you know, you represent diversity because you're gay. Yeah. I think that, you know, the presidential election would be a great way for you to get your name out there. Right. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like, it's kind of it's kind of some brilliant shit like Andrew Yang did. I don't know. I don't, I don't think Andrew Yang was really trying to win. I think Andrew Yang was trying to promote his books, trying to promote his new ideas, and it's yeah. led into him being... A character, a figure now. He's got a job yeah. with CNN. You know what I mean? I think it's the same thing with Mayor Pete. I think Mayor Pete has some great ideas. I think he's um, super smart. And I think that he was really just trying to get his name up. But now... It's like, we're here. It's like, shit, fuck it. Let me like, go for it. If, yeah. I can, if, I can, if I can do it now, why not Why not go for it? You know? Yeah. So I think, I think that's setting him up for a greater play later. I think he winds up in the Senate. You know, more so than anything. And he'll 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 if he runs for a Senate seat, he'll probably win that in a landslide. Just Do you because... think that he could win a Senate seat in Indiana? Yeah. 
Really? Gay yeah, guy yeah. in a republic in a and a Democrat in like Republican Indiana, conservative Bro, he, Indiana. He's, he's marrying South Bend. He fucking was number one. He was like tied for number one in the Iowa caucuses. Like he was, yeah, you know, top what three in Nevada. Like, I, yeah, but he's got to do it within his state or move to another state. I mean, not Nevada, New Hampshire. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I don't. I don't see why not. I don't. Mm-hmm. I, don't I don't see why not. But I, I just think they're setting them up for a greater play later. Um, I think that I personally think the establishment wants Bloomberg or Biden. That's who I think the establishment mm. wants. I think the establishment wants Bloomberg or Biden. And, you know, people got upset with me on um because I gave Joe Biden donkey of the day, and I, I said during donkey of the day that you know the first person to announce a black woman as their running mate or a woman of color as their running mate <clears throat> wins. And they was like, oh, that's tokenism. Nah, nah, nah. I said, no. The three people I named are overqualified. I named Senator Kamala Harris, probably to run with Biden. Stacey Abrams, to run with Mayor Bloomberg, which makes perfect sense because Mayor Bloomberg gave her $5 million for her fair fight 2020 last year. Mm-hmm. Or um, Nina Turner, to run with Senator Bernie Sanders. And like all of those people are o- more than overqualified. But any any white man who runs on the Democratic ticket either has to have a woman our woman of color is their VP. You think? You have to. You have to in 2020. Mm. It's, just, it's the same reason people got to have diversity on their fucking TV shows and in the workplace. And that you'd be, you'd be tone deaf and blind if you didn't have a woman, in particular a woman of color, a, a, as your VP. And the reason I, I, I think that one of those, because to me it's all about the running mates at this point, right? Because mm. none of the guys that you see out there are, they're all uninspiring. None of them are making you like, oh, I got to go out and vote for them. So right. it's like, build your team. Right. Show people what you got around you. Mm. You know? Mm. So who are the who are the most uh, loyal voting block in politics? I don't know. I think black women, right? Oh, Didn't yeah. They yeah, say yeah, like yeah, for, 90, yeah, for Democrats. Yeah, 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 like 90% of black women or something like that voted yeah, yeah, yeah. for Hillary last year. So I wonder if the establishment is going, okay, we got them. That's a lock. We don't need to cater to them because they're the most loyal voting block. Why don't we put someone else in there that will get the people that are in the middle to pull over to our side? That's true. But I mean, but listen, I'm wondering strategically if they do that, maybe that's not the best decision for the country. Maybe that's not the best decision for this election, but I wonder if strategically to pull over those centrist voters, just like Trump picked a really religious dude to pull those religious guys over. So I wonder if they pick someone kind of in the middle, if the Democrats pick someone a little bit in the middle to pull everybody. Well, Biden's a moderate, right? But he won't vice again. No, I'm saying, but if he's the, if he's on the leading ticket, Uh, you go grab Senator Harris. I I think that that's a, if Biden wasn't senile, I think that, (laughs) I think that that would be an actual really interesting ticket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Right? Because they're both, kind of conservative for Democrats. They're, they're both moderate. hard on they're crime. Moderate. They're yeah. like, Biden's like, no, we're not doing weed. Weed's not going to be legalized. Yeah. Like, they're Which both tough. If Joe smokes some weed, he's straighten right the fuck up. Oh, you think he's straighten right? Yeah, I think he'd yeah, forget yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. think so? I think he'd be up there like, I'm Senator <laughs> Kamal Harris. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I think I think he would straighten right the fuck up. Um, I agree with you, though. I just think that, you know, once you get... I, by the way, I think everybody's moderate except for Bernie and Elizabeth. Yo, Elizabeth got to go. Yeah, I don't like Elizabeth. This more. girl got to go. She is so fucking phony, Can we put her man. under the what a fucking idiot part? Yes, let's do it. We got to put her under the what a fucking idiot part. I hated what she oh said to Mayor Bloomberg. God, like, she literally bro. told Mayor Bloomberg. She's a snitch, bro. She a tattletale. Well, in 1993, well, you did shut up. She told Mayor Bloomberg. Get yo, a haircut. She told Mayor Bloomberg, bro. Yo, you told a woman to kill her baby. Now. Aren't you pro-abortion? But well, here's the thing. Yeah. This ain't social media. It's not a blog. This is a debate stage in America yeah. on a Tuesday fucking night. Yeah. You can't just put that on me without no fucking proof. Yeah. If you put that shit on me, you better yeah. have the Summer Jam screen behind you <laughs> with me coming up on the video saying, hey, yes, kill the baby. Yeah. Or immediately your social media team should be posting a video of me yeah. saying this shit. And that's what Boombox said. Boombox said, I never said that shit. Yeah, but now you're defending some shit. And once you defend some shit, you look guilty. Bloomberg said, but the moderator, I got to give props to the moderators. They said to her, where's the evidence of this? How can you just make a claim like this with no evidence? And she was like, it came out of her mouth. Okay, so if we're supposed to believe everything that comes out of folks' mouth, then you're an Indian. (laughs) You're a fucking Native American, Elizabeth Warren. No, I'm saying that. Oh, my God. (laughs) 
I was like, Anderson Cooper, you need to get your dick sucked for that one, Anderson Cooper. <laughs> Man, Pete, where are you, friends? <laughs> Go hand the fucking Anderson, please. What the fuck? He deserves it. <laughs> Bro, that would have been a comeback of a century. Listen, all I'm simply, all I'm simply saying is... Comeback. Did, Talking I, about Anderson Cooper. <laughs> I just... <laughs> I just hate I just hate when they do that. Like, yo, you can't do that in a debate, yo. Yeah. You can't just accuse me of telling somebody I killed their baby. Yeah. I, is it that serious? <laughs> now, if yeah. we want to, if you want to just pull up shit that happened on social media and shit people say, I can throw a whole bunch of things at you, Elizabeth. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I, can we can we can we can we fight below the, b- above the belt? Yeah. You know she is. She's just trying to get moment. Like it's she's so desperate. It's like oozing out of her. She was desperate. Last she's night was desperate. So desperate. No, it was. And she knows that if she has a big moment on the stage, that it can kind of increase maybe donations or polling or whatever the fuck it is. Because she kind of said something to who'd she say in the last debate that she got some buzz about. She called, was it Bloomberg? She was, yeah, she got on Bloomberg's ass. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and then yeah. everybody gave her some praise, a social media yeah, praise. Yeah, yeah, and she yeah. got some buzz. She's like, okay, so I got to drop some hot shit on him this time. But it don't translate in the polls. It's not it, like she shot up in the polls after that last, after last, after people the People think debate. you're corny. When you do that, yeah. we we don't like snitches. We don't like tattletales. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah, why yeah, we, yeah. we literally criticize children for doing both of those things. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, say yeah, to yeah. our children, don't be a tattletale. Yeah. So you think grown adults are going to see a woman up there Damn near 70 years old, tattletailing. Yeah. And go, I need to vote for the tattletale? With no evidence, by the way. And, no- and, and then, she, then she brings up the NDAs, and Bloomberg is like, I did exactly what Senator Warren asked me to do. I released the three young women from their NDAs so they can tell their stories, and I abolished NDAs from all my companies, period. Whoa. So never again. Can I can can somebody somebody be forced to sign an NDA or have to sign an NDA? And he was like, that'll probably change corporate America. Elizabeth can't pivot. Senator Warren say? couldn't pivot. She was just like, well, no, we want you to make, to release, have all the women released. And then he yeah. goes, I did. I did. And Senator, and Bloomberg said, the problem with Senator Warren is enough is never enough for her. Mm. Mm. Made her look stupid. Made her look like, yo, he made Elizabeth Warren look like a fucking idiot, Joe. Mm. And it was hard to look like an idiot on that stage because everybody looks like an idiot on that fucking <laughs> stage. I'm serious. For you to be a standout idiot yeah. on that stage, you got to be a real idiot. He really made Elizabeth Warren look crazy as fuck, yo. I because I, yo, I'm going to be honest with you. All the Democrats to me are fucking idiots because- They are, man. To be on that stage and to be arguing amongst each other, cannibalizing Son, each other. They don't get it, I understand bro. you don't like Bernie Sanders because you think he's a democratic socialist or whatever, but it's got to be a strategic way to get behind the hot hand. Who's the one person that don't criticize everybody and don't take shots at everybody? Bernie. Bernie. The one guy, because Bernie. he sees the bigger picture, he's Bernie. like, I could come up here and throw haymakers at Bernie. all you fucking goofballs. You don't think Bernie could go up there and just body Bloomberg left and right? Bernie's also winning, though. Say what? He's also winning. But that's always been his strategy. Even yeah. with Hillary when she stole the election from him. Yeah. Right? He didn't say anything bad about her. They, they're literally, they were literally stealing the election from him. Yeah. He didn't say shit. They did it again in Iowa. He didn't say shit. Yeah, I mean, he, she, she blames Bernie a lot now because she said Bernie didn't energize his people uh, to vote for her. Who, Hillary? Yeah, yeah, Is yeah. Is there yeah. anything that's her fault? Is there anything at all that's her fault? Come, yo, man, it comes to Nothing? point. Nothing? Listen, I, I agree with you. It's it comes, like, you need a little self-awareness in this game, bro. Like, if you keep losing, if you're Hillary Clinton and you keep losing, maybe it's you. It comes a point in time where you have to know that maybe you're just not inspiring nobody. Maybe, you know, you, your policies just ain't hitting. Maybe your legislation ain't what people want. It kind of got to come a point in time where you have to realize some of this is about you, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and I, I say that about all the candidates on stage. I like Mayor Pete, right? I think Mayor Pete has a bright future. But Bernie has the hot hand. If you have the hot hand, just get behind the guy with the hot hand. Make sure he got the right team around him. Bro. Like, stop telling me about, oh, he's not electable. How is he not electable? And, and and Joe Biden is the guy that can beat Trump when Joe can't even beat Bernie. Son, Joe. <laughs> Joe can't beat Bernie. The, Joe has yet to beat Bernie in a primary. That's the thing. Yo, it's, they're just, the establishment is afraid of Bernie because they can't control him. They know they can't control him. And that scares the shit out of them. But yeah. the reality is that people can sense authenticity. And even if you disagree with every one of his economic policies, which I pretty much do, he's authentic. He's authentic, I'll man. vote for an authentic person. Yeah. 
over. Yo, real talk. Say whatever you want about Trump. The right felt he was authentic, authentic. Yeah. when you yeah. saw him on the debate stage, right? And you saw him against all these other like career politicians who are going for the unity of America, and they were talking with their their hand. We kind don't of talk like the this. language of politics. The majority of America don't talk the language of politics, bro. And a guy went up there and was like, "Yo, why why is he sleepy?" You're like, "Yo, he Yo, does kind of look sleepy. sleepy. Joe. He's sleepy, mini Mike." But let's go. That's Come what on, we would say, bro. Come on. I, I, listen, all I know is the Democrats are gonna catch hell think, in November. I think Bernie's holding some. I think Bernie's holding some bars for Trump. I think. I think he knows he's going to be having debates with Trump, and I think Bernie's going to drop some bars on him. Here's the thing about Bernie that's dope. He's the old man sitting on the porch telling you to get the fuck off his lawn, mm. right? Mm. But his you're not going to punk Bernie. Not one time on that stage last night did Bernie get punked. Mm. You say something about Bernie that's not you. No, no, fuck no. Let no. me let me talk. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. he's loud, wagging it's, a finger. It's, it's, it's curmudgeon y. Yes, but it works. Yes, he's not letting them push him the fuck around. Yes, that's the that's the beauty of of of, of Bernie of Bernie Sanders to me. And I just think that they need to get behind the hot hand, man. Like yeah. it, like even last night they spent all that time attacking Bernie, trying to attack Bloomberg, attacking Bernie, trying to attack Bloomberg. First of all, got to give kudos to Mike Bloomberg. Why would he do? He came Mike back. Mike Bloomberg came back the way the I night. want Deontay Wilder to come back. Really? Yes, man. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Because he, Mike Bloomberg, got his ass kicked the way Deontay got his ass kicked against Tyson yeah. Fury. Yeah. But he came back last night. He was so, super solid. What would he say? Just, just it was, it was the fact that it was his comebacks were were quick. Yeah. And he actually had things to say. He didn't seem nervous. He had one corny ass joke where he was like, "I can't even believe they're back on this stage with me after the way I scared them last week." Corny. You know what I'm saying? I understand where he was trying to go, but he yeah. set it up wrong, yeah. right? But he did very well. So I don't know. I just, I just, I just think Bernie's the guy with the hot hand. I think that they should get behind motherfucking uh, Bernie Sanders and j just sitting there watch them attack Bernie over and over last night, but not look at the camera and tell the American people what they're what they're going to do for the American people and why we should Bruh. vote for them. Bro, this exactly like, this is exactly what happened with the last election. Haley was talking about how she's not Trump. And not talking about what she was going to do for the people. And all you got to do to win this shit is say what you're going to do to the people. Fucking Andrew Yang, out of nowhere, yeah. says, I'm going to give everyone $1,000. Out of nowhere, yeah. and becomes a legitimate candidate. Because he was his, he yeah. was campaigning on what he was going to do. Yeah, yeah. and, and it's Not such, who he wasn't. And it's such a distraction because you don't get to hear about Mike Bloomberg's Greenwood Initiative. Bernie doesn't get to say how he wants to give kids, he wants to erase all student loan debt. Like, that's the type of shit Americans want to hear. Do that? It that's don't the thing matter. about Bernie. He's, like, he, he, he's in dream selling. Du okay, all of them are. Duval said Bernie's just trying to go to heaven. <laughs> but Duval said Bernie's about to die, so he's like, I might as well try to give away everything. Bro, Bernie already been to heaven, bro. <laughs> say what? Bernie he's close. Attack. Yeah, Bernie's Bernie seen it. Bernie's like, all right. <laughs> Bernie's like, I'll be back. Let me get this, let me, let me get this one more go. <laughs> That's probably what happened. Yo, Loki looks younger this time around. No, he doesn't. You Loki, don't think? Bernie looks like Larry fucking David. Bro. And if I was Bernie, if I had the money, I'd be running ads that's I'll be running ads with Larry with David. Larry? And Larry would be pointing at the camera yeah, saying, good. Don't let the Democratic establishment curve your enthusiasm for Bernie Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders. Yeah, that's good. Like that's what the fuck I would be doing. Like nobody where's the pop culture angle? Yo. That's the other way that Trump kills. The pop, pop culture, culture angle. They don't get it. It's they pop don't culture, get it, baby. Man. Democrats, the the establishment are a bunch of fucking dorks. They don't understand entertainment. Bro, I saw the best Bernie meme. It said, uh, I don't always comb my hair, but when I do, I use a balloon. <laughs> that shit killed me, bro. All right, man. That was uh, that was uh, what do we call this segment? Oh, it's positively brilliant. What a fucking idiot. Uh, that's that segment. Let's pay some bills, goddamn it. I, I gotta piss, guys. With Boost Mobile, you finally have everything you could want in a wireless carrier. No annual service contract. Boost Mobile offers a range of data plans and the latest phones from top brands at affordable prices. Their network is super reliable and super fast, so you can post up and watch the game or stream Brilliant Idiots almost anywhere. We all know smartphones are expensive. Wouldn't it be nice to not force the family to wrestle over one phone? Step up with Boost Mobile and you can get four free Samsung Galaxy A20 phones when you switch, okay? I know most of you share a phone with your whole family because <laughs> that's quite commonplace. So Boost Mobile is solving that problem. If you come from a one family cell phone 
definitely switch to Boost Mobile because Boost Mobile will fix that problem. Step up with Boost Mobile and switch today if you want a super reliable, super fast nationwide network to keep you connected. Switch now to Boost Mobile. Limited time offer while supp- supplies last. New customers only requires port and activation from a- activation. Sorry, from eligible carrier. One free device per line. Users using more than 35 gigs of data during a billing cycle may deprior- be deprioritized during times of network congestion. Offers and coverage not available everywhere. Visit BoostMobile.com or a retailer for full details now let's get back to the show oh look at that timing amazing right back we're right back let's do church let's do church announcements right now then fuck it where we at where we at where we at where you at bro shit i don't fuck you know i don't remember that's the fucked up part right all right right? church announcements no no we're doing church announcements okay Uh, hey taylor please be quiet jesus christ (laughs) Jesus see, it's bad. And when you tell a woman to shut up, then we the bad guy. Exactly, right? <laughs> How we say shut up? How do we say shut up without saying shut up? Yo, you know what Taylor said to me at the beginning of this this what? day? Stop. No, what? no, because you said it to me. That's workplace harassment. She goes, don't start with me. I'm about to start my period. Wow. I didn't want to know that. Wow. That's disgusting. Wow. Okay. What did you say? I said, "Don't touch my coffee." No. <laughs> I said, "Get your fucking period fingers off my goddamn coffee! You've been applicating tampons all day. You're gonna get it in my damn coffee." All right. This is disgusting. Oh, Have man. some respect. Okay. Me no want to hear you talking about your period. Here we go. <laughs> Bro, what's the character's name again? Bob, Bob, Bob O'Marley. O'Marley. You know Bob O'Marley don't fuck with, you know Jamaican Irish don't fuck with periods, though. You know that, right? Jamaican Irish don't fuck with periods, though. Anyway, church yo, announcements. church announcements. Uh, Miami, all the shows sold out this weekend. Thank y'all so much. We'll see you. Portland, we added another show Thursday. Um, so make sure you get those tickets, theandrewshows.com. Then we got some other shows we've added. Reading, PA, once the poorest city in all of the United States. We're coming there. Okay, uh, Minneapolis, Minnesota. We added another show. Tucson, Arizona. We got a show. Uh, make sure y'all come out. Buy your tickets. TheAndrewShows.com. We added a bunch more cities. Mad or tour. Um, special tapings all sold out. All four. Very excited about that. Go check out what we got going on. TheAndrewShows.com. Charla. Take it um, over. Uh, my church announcements. Uh, I, I don't even like doing these because things change so much. But um tomorrow I'm supposed to I'm I'm supposed to be I'm scheduled to be on Aaron Burnett out front. Um that could change because just the news is always breaking. Um and I'm gonna be on I'm definitely gonna be on Stephen Colbert tomorrow night. So Oi! salute to my guy Stephen Colbert. It's like Congrats. my it's like my eighth or ninth time on the show. South Carolina privilege. It is what it is. That's my guy. And also, uh go to my YouTube page, uh watch the interview that I put up with, with our guy Pete Davidson. Yes. Um guy code alumni Pete Davidson. Um He's still on SNL, but that could change tomorrow too. It could be form- <laughs> this could it could be formally uh, of SNL, but yeah, go check that interview out. Um, salute to everybody. Yo, that interview it got reposted a lot of different places, yo, and it's yeah. so interesting. I was having this conversation. I might have been having it with Pete, but I was saying how it is so hard to get people to give a fuck about you. Yes. So even though it's annoying as shit, I understand. I I understand if you're a Pete Davis and anybody, one of these people that they're always getting followed and paparazzi popping up to your house or wherever you at and shit like that. I know it's annoying. Yep. But is it annoying when you put out your stand up special and those same blog sites are reposting that shit everywhere? <laughs> right. Like I, when, when he announced his stand up special, I saw that shit everywhere. When he announced the big time adolescence Hulu trailer, I, I saw that shit. I saw that shit everywhere. The special came out yesterday. I see these same sites that are reporting on his love life and everything else, reporting on the things he says in his special. Yep. You have to take with the, good, the good with the bad, man. It's true. Because trust me, it's people out there that, they, that nobody gives a fuck about. True. That's why when you see these <clears throat> celebrities and they're trying to do shit like these stunts yeah. just to get people talking, because they think once they get on the radar right. of these certain blogs and everything else, they'll always be on the radar of these blogs. Yeah. And in a lot of, way, in a lot of cases, it's true. Right. That's why, like, you know, Pete had it happen organically for him with Ariana Grande. Right. But you see that. They try to do these matchmaking things like, hey, date this guy for a little while or date this girl for a little while. What do you mean by that? 
they do that. Like celebs do that, you're yeah, saying? Yeah, PR really? people. Really? Yes, come on, man. Absolutely. So they'll tell certain celebrities to date each other date because each other. people have a fascination with relationships. People have or a fascination with relationships. And, and then once you, once you hot like that, you kind of always hot like that. And like, is that how the Ariana Grande relationship happened? No, no, I think that was genuine. You oh, know what okay. I'm saying? But I'm saying, like, it, that's why I said it happened for him organically. Because you, you, you look at it. Think about anybody. Think about, yo, don't get me wrong. Brad and, and Angelina and Brad and Jen, superstars. Right. But you're still talking about that shit 30 fucking 40 years later. Yeah, we have the a fascination you know what I'm saying? with relationships. Rihanna and Chris Brown, they was together. And you're still talking about them and who they're dating now and who they care about. But it's always that. It always started with that. Yeah. Not, not saying that they don't have other things around them that keep people in their orbit. But you got to get that spark started. Some fucking hell. Yeah. You know, and a lot of times that's the case. So now but, you're right about Pete. He does have a magnetism. It's very interesting. Like people are curious about his life and invested and interested in his life almost in the same way, like in Europe where they're invested in like royal families. Yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. He's, it's like, he's kind of like the, uh, like step, not stepson, but like the, uh, not the heir to the throne, just like a nephew yeah, 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 of yeah. the king who's like fucking up. Yeah. But you're really curious because he's got real blood and you want to know what's going on in his yeah. life. And it, it's just, it's, it's, he's had this fascinating ride for me because most of the things that we know him from are not comedy. They're mm. dating celebs or dealing with yeah. mental health or dealing with these different things. I mean, it's start, it's start, I mean, it started with comedy, right? Because a guy called- he was, Wild I mean, he out. is, I'm sure, still, but yeah. very funny, like very funny guy. And he got SNL. He got SNL because of his talent. Because his talent, man. He got all the things because of his talent. Then he he got really young because of SNL. Eh. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right, like, right, right, right. So right, it's right, like right, the, right. the comedy talent got him on SNL, put him yeah. in a different position. Now it's these women at home, like, oh, he's kind of cute. I'd like to know who that is. And then you know he connects with these women, and then yeah. so it's not, it's really not his fault. But it's also it's a, it's a superpower, right? Because Nobody gives a fuck about Kevin Federline. Right. You know what I'm saying? So you can date one of the biggest stars in the Thank you, Taylor. You can date one of the biggest stars in the world and nobody will care. Yeah. So you, you can't get too down on yourself and say like, oh, they only fuck with you because of Ariana Grande. Nah, that's not true. Because where the fuck is... Uh, Kevin Federline. Him, but it's another one. Sure. Who the fuck was Kim Kardashian married to before Kanye, the ball player? Chris oh, Humphreys. Uh, Chris Humphreys. Nobody gives a fuck? Yeah. And he balling. He got like... Ten fast food restaurants. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He, he balling in. I can't remember. I can't remember what the restaurant is, but he's got a. He's big in the fast food world. Like, is that right? But nobody cares. Is what I'm saying. Yeah. And the beauty, you got to take the good with the bad. When they give a fuck about you, yeah. Just give them more things to give a fuck about. To a certain extent, right? Like, there's. I don't know. I I think. Uh, I don't know content you, is what I'm saying. Yeah. No content. Yes. And I, I just don't think you want to monetize tragedy. And I th and that's that's where like I push back because certain people I think they get. And I'm not saying this of Pete. I don't know really enough about Pete's situation to to know it. But like, you know, the Real Housewives people I think monetize tragedy, right? It's like yeah. th they got arrested. One of them's going to jail, and all of a sudden there's a special before he goes to jail or she goes to jail, whatever. And it's just like, ah, you're doing anything to stay in front of the limelight because you don't have a skill. Pete's different. He has a skill. Yeah. So uh, my thing has always been like, well, just showcase the skill, bro. Like, it's who gives a fuck who you date or anything? Like that? Just showcase the skill. You got a real skill. I get what you're saying. Should, should this be the bucket segment? Up to you, man. Let's do the bucket. It's bucket segment. It's big pussy segment. What do we call it? Oh, the bucket fuck. talk. <laughs> bucket. <laughs> we'll come back. We'll come back to shit Dude. you won't care about next week. Bucket yeah. talk, right? Yeah, yeah. It's deep, the deep dive. Yeah, yeah. Right? It's hard not to monetize tragedy. And yeah. I'll tell you why. Because your greatest commodity is you. Mm. So if you've been through something, whether you're a musician, a comedian, a writer, whatever the fuck it is, you can only tell your story, right? So if you've been through something <laughs> tragic and you're not over it, you got to talk about that. And even if you are over it or you're in the process of healing, you got to talk about that too. Because that's what yeah. helps you heal, uh, Yeah, right? I guess, let me clarify. You always have your life to mine and talk about. Mm -hmm. It's how you are digested that matters. So it's like, I love comics. I love musicians. I love all these people that take the things in their lives, you know, myself included, and then put it into their work. And then I love digesting the work, mm -hmm. but I don't care who Adele is dating. I care about that breakup song. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? But you don't get the breakup song without her. I'm not dating. saying don't date. Yeah, yeah. I'm not yeah, saying yeah, don't yeah. date, but there are certain people that will like have their PR company call the fucking uh, paparazzi and be like, "Yo, Absolutely. they're coming off the airplane right now." Time. Blah blah blah. Like that's never gonna be me. Like I don't need the paparazzi to find me out to dinner with somebody because I want there to be drama because I'm I might be on a date with this girl. Like, but as you continue to grow, yeah, it's gonna happen naturally. That, if it listen, it might happen naturally. But my whole thing is I'm gonna give you the content because I believe in the content. Absolutely. And like to be honest, we're both s- similar in this way in that like we have our private. Love lives. Absolutely. You know, me and you. No, I'm just kidding. And, uh, <laughs> Don't no, but, tell our secrets. Okay? I knew they was gay. You hush. I knew they was gay. When no. you see my phone ringing, it says Ivory. <laughs> and you see Andrew's ringing, it says Ebony. You know who we are. <laughs> <laughs> you trying to play some piano? You want to play some piano? <laughs> our group name is the Black Eyed Keys. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like we've kept that those things yeah. away from the We haven't really monetized our relationships, right? And people can, and it's very effective to monetize relationships. Yeah, I'm not with it. I'm not with it either. I like having that part mm-hmm. of me, right? So, but we also have a confidence in our work and the output, which is, yo, if we want attention, we want eyes, we'll give you that work. Like this is yeah, I'm with you. That's man. not an issue. Like, I'm with you. The, the crazy thing about it, though, right? It's like you can be doing all the work. And you never know how much people care about your outside shit until outside shit happens. Mm. And it can be some bad outside shit. Mm. Next thing you know, you all over you like people talk about talking about you like, what the fuck? The same thing about talking about Deontay Wilder. Mm. Like, Deontay probably never realized how many motherfuckers gave a fuck about him because they didn't talk about him in that way when he was out there busting ass. They mm. they spoke about him, but not like that. Yeah. Now, as soon as you do some shit that people don't agree with or you say something people don't agree with or you get arrested whatever mm. now you all over the news you're all over the blogs and you're like well, what the fuck yeah. why don't I get this kind of love and this kind of attention when I'm just putting out the content mm. you know and I also think that a lot of this stuff it runs parallel right like what you talk about Adele you don't care who's Adele's dating but if you're just, just look at it as a timeline comes out in the blogs just say Adele's dating I don't know whatever I think they say she was dating some UK rapper but I forgot yeah. who the, I can't forgot who it was not Stormzy it's uh, Skepta Scepter. Skepta Skepta I think it was yeah yeah so he's dating Skepta right so you're yeah. watching that then you see the pictures of them and stuff like that and then you know you're happy for them right but then yeah. when they break up Adele puts out that record it feels like you've been watching. A, a story yeah it's, it's it's like watching a beginning then a middle then an end like yeah. even with Ariana and Pete it's like yeah. you watch that they got engaged you're like oh shit Pete and Ariana engaged that's yeah. the shit whatever whatever then it's the breakup and like oh shit they broke yeah. up then it's the thank the you song. next <laughs> you yeah, know what I'm yeah. saying now it's Pete with his stand up special it's just like it kind of all just goes with each other in this era you kind of need it all yeah Al, Al brought up another one Taylor Swift I, I mean I think if your primary goal is um, with your relationships is content, Mm -hmm. then if that's your primary goal, it's a very effective way to put it out. But, you know, my my primary goal with my relationship is to have a family and have someone I could share that with and love and raise kids in a way that I think would help you know, change the world. You you could change the world literally through your children, right? Like this, you you actually get to see the world change. Because you have some people you could raise with ideas that you want. That, to me, is far more important than, like, yo, look how fun a couple we are. Yeah, yeah, And I know people that monetize their coupleness. And my feeling on that is, like, you're putting crazy pressure on yourselves to be in a great mood and a great place all the time. Like, relationships are hard enough as it is. I don't need a million Instagram followers going, oh, my God, I love y'all together. Y'all are so happy all the time. Like, Fuck that. That's got to be rough, right? That's rough. Like, yeah. Because you, you can't be real. You got to act in your own relationship. You guys are fighting, but on vacation, you got to smile in a photo because you need some fucking likes on Instagram? No, dude. It's got to be rough for those people once they break up, too. Because if you get the label of somebody who is, you know, uh, using your situations as content, it's like, I can't trust you. Yeah. I don't know what's real and what's not real. Next person you date is like, are they just clout chasing? Like, yeah, what's? Yeah, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, but you know, I, I get everything you're saying. That's why I'm, I'm glad that Pete's to the point where, you know, now he's you're gonna see a lot of content from Pete. I love that. You the know? special, the movie, like Netflix do that, special is man. out now, live from New York. Um, the 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 movie Big Time Adolescence comes out next month with Machine Gun Kelly and Jordan Rock. Love seeing Jordan get his look in a, in a film. 
The Machine Gun Kelly's a great actor. <laughs> I love Jordan, man. Um, King of Staten Island is fucking great. Uh, he's in Suicide Squad too. Like it's just a lot. He's killing it. He picked the right time to talk shit about SNL. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he picked the right yes. time to express to express his displeasure. Yes. About SNL. Yeah. Because it's not. It's like it's like fuck you money. Fuck you money. Right. Yeah. You may not have fuck you money, but you got fuck you opportunities. What is your take on SNL? I f- I feel like been trash. So. <laughs> okay, remember, I don't know, do you remember when, like, Dane Cook became, like, a punchline? Like, Dane Cook was this incredibly successful comedian, right? Yeah, like, yeah, he yeah. sought out the garden, he was the first person to really use the internet yeah. in a way to, like, promote himself. And then, like, sometimes what happens with guys is, like, they just become uncool and they become, like, a punchline. Like, it was in a fucking Will Ferrell movie. Dane, Dane seemed like the type of person who was, like, the first internet comic that nobody respected. Yes, yes, yes. And, and it was, and it was... I think it was kind of unfair, but again, it might have been a similar Deontay Wilder situation where it's like, oh, wow, like you you can't wait to tear a guy down. And then when he does come down, it's a lot of fun and everybody went at him. I agree with you because I didn't even realize Dane Cook was that pop until people started shitting on him. <laughs> they, <laughs> I'm not boom. even lying. But it became this thing that was like fun and okay to shit on yeah. or whatever, right? He was on SNL? No, no, he wasn't. Oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. And I feel like SNL is almost becoming... The new version of that, where it's like, I've I've yet to see or hear anybody say anything complimentary about SNL. SNL is is I'm gonna tell you what SNL is. SNL is like a uh, American Idol. Um, remember remember how big American Idol was? Yeah. The reason American Idol was so big is because American Idol was actually producing stars. There was a period ah. in SNL where they weren't producing. We, we were used to them churning out stars. Eddie Murphy, yeah. Will Ferrell, fucking uh, Maya Rudolph. Is that her name? Maya Rudolph. It's, it's just mad people came from SNL. Adam Sandler. Yeah, yeah. Maya Rudolph. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a time where yeah. all of that was- Chevy Chase. Chevy Chase. Bill Murray. Bill Murray. That's yeah. what I mean. Like There was a period where they weren't doing that no more. It was like college- for being a star. Yeah. You went there, yeah, you put yeah, your time yeah. in, and then you were a fucking mm-hmm. superstar after mm-hmm. that. And then you're saying that stopped. It stopped. And then once that stopped. And I'm not gonna say it stopped completely, but it wasn't as as as, as, as lucrative as it once was. There was yeah. a point where it was just like, whoa, this this, this is the fucking Bro, farmhouse for fucking superstars. It's just so weird. Like, cause I know I have friends who work on a show who are fucking funny and talented, and then and I don't watch it, so I can't tell you that it's horrible. But I have yet to I meet somebody. It's, it's is it that bad? <laughs> like I literally, I try to defend it. I'm like, bro, it can't be that fat. I, I know funny people nah. to work on the show, but literally any person you meet, it's like they're like, oh yeah, SNL is horrible. It's unwatchable, and it's like, but how can it be that bad? I watch SNL because I have people on SNL. Like Pete is our guy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I like Michael Che. I don't Michael I'm, Che. I, I don't know him personally, but I like him. You know what I'm hilarious. saying? Hilarious. I like I like Chris. You know, I like uh, Leslie. When I she love was Colin on there. Jost, man. Good. I, I like I like Weekend Update with Colin Jost and Michael Chay. Like I, I, so I watch it. I like Pete. I watch the show. Yeah, but it's garbage. And 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 and, 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 I mean, and and I try to defend, but I don't, I can't defend because I don't watch it. I but I also it can't shit on it because I don't watch no. it. I just see a sketch every once in a while no, on YouTube. Bad. And yo, sometimes the sketches are funny. I see like the the debate sketches hilarious. Yeah, that like, shit. The debate when for whatever reason when they in a political bag. It's all right. That shit has been really good. The casting is good. With the Black they... Jeopardy one? But that was a special episode. See, to me, those are special episodes. Okay. Because Black Jeopardy was fucking, um, who was that? That was Eddie Murphy, right? No. Chadwick Boseman. No, Black Jeopardy was, um... I think it was Chadwick Boseman. I think it was Chadwick Boseman. I mean, this is bad that I mean, we they, can't they, remember. They, they've done it a few times. So yeah. I, I think Eddie might have done one with uh, Black Jeopardy. I know Chadwick Boseman did one. but And that's another thing, right? Yeah. SNL over the year, has they, they, their hosts have gotten a lot more diverse. So right. I find myself watching it. I watched it when Chadwick Boseman hosted. I watched when I actually went when Tiffany had hosted. Tom Hanks. Tom Hanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the oh, one the that exploded okay. was the Tom gotcha. Hanks one, right? Because that was the one where they basically showcased, like, oh, the, the real conservative right-wing people Got like, you, got you, got real you. conservative right wing whites yeah. and like southern blacks actually liked all the same shit. Yeah. Like I like my women thicker. I like you know cornbread and whatever. Like they, it was a really yeah, interesting yeah, 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 yeah. when you take these these two groups you think would have nothing in common. Yeah. You realize oh shit they got everything in common. It was yeah. like really brilliant. I, I and I guess maybe it's hard to recreate one of those every week or something. But it's just such a weird time in comedy when like you never hear this sentence. Man, I just love SNL. 
<laughs> yeah. Isn't that a Listen, weird time I, in comedy? I, like, can, I can play white devil's advocate, right? All right, go. And I can say the reason SNL sucks is because it's just simply too hard to do sketch nowadays because nothing beats this fucking shit you see on your phone. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like nothing beats those real life stupid ass shit you see on your phone. Like the dumb shit we just turn on and laugh at that's happening yeah. in real life. Yeah. You can't duplicate that shit. Back Bro, in the day, sketch is all we had. Dog, a podcast. You podcast. gonna laugh more times listening to a podcast then you will watch an SNL. Do you? I don't watch it, so I don't. It's is that the case, bro? SNL sucks, bro. I can tell you, like, like Eddie Murphy. Eddie, 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 Eddie Murphy was good on SNL because Eddie Murphy is Eddie Murphy, right? Um, and you can tell. And by the way, level of talent too. I'm gonna tell you why because you can see how a level of talent can elevate something. So what? Ooh, this is interesting. So when the level of talent, are, are you saying that they don't have the level of talent necessary to pull off the show? I guess I am because you know mm. when I talk about how. They're not producing the stars they once did, right? That's true. So if they're not producing the stars you once did, then the level of talent just ain't, it's not there. Like, yo, it's certain people that pop on screen. Like, Michael Che to me pops on screen. I love Michael Che. I right. think Michael Che and Colin Jobs Weekend Update should be a whole other show. Interesting. Just a whole other 30 minute show. I think they tried to do that at one point, but that should, to me, that should be just a whole other show right. that they do. They could compete with Trevor Noah and The Daily Show or whatever. Like, I think. It's, it's, it's I don't that think, good. I don't think it does Mike justice. I think Mike's like a really brilliant comedic They mind. should be on cable. That weekend update uh, show with Colin and Michael should be on cable, and they should just be uh, going. I, don't, I think I don't think it does justice to Mike. He, that kid is fucking a comedic genius, yeah, yeah, and he's yeah. doing like one liners. Like so, a, a, like anytime you got to watch his stand up to yeah. know how good he is. Yeah. He's doing one liners because that's what the role of the show, of of that it weekend update thing is. But if you watch his stand up, stand up, yeah. it's fucking great. But it, it, it pains me because I'm looking and I'm like, oh, this is what people think you do on stage probably. No, I they got you. They think you just you. do one-liners. I got you. When like, your comedy's way more dynamic. I got you. Know? you. I got to shoot out. I got to shout out Chris though. I think Chris is good. I think Keenan is good. And I'm not just naming all the black people. I just really think that. Right. I, re I really think he, at Sketch, I think Keenan is great. Yo, Keenan's been killing it, man. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? For he's, 19 years. Yeah, he's been killing it. And hasn't gained a pound. But hasn't lost one either. Hasn't lost he's, one either. <laughs> he has remained medium fat for, for a long 19 time. years, you gotta get bro. A, yo, you got to give him props on that, Dude, yo. That, he's like you know a how sumo hard it is to be medium fat? Dude, that is amazing. For people to look at you and be like, you're one burger away. You need to slow down. <laughs> yeah. But you never eat that one burger. One burger takes away. Takes discipline. Either way. You're one burger yeah. away from being slim and trim. Yeah. Yes. Yo, you would think yes. one year and 19 years, you would go, yo, I'm going to get fit. Yeah. Or one year you go, I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. No. Keenan has been going back and forth with, I don't give a fit fuck. For <laughs> fucking 19, 19 years, bro. You got sweatpants, buddy. 19 years, man. 19 years. Dude, he needs an accolade. He does. His metabolism does. figured out what he is. Yes. Like his metabolism. Maybe he, maybe, <laughs> maybe he eats to that. Because you know you can go to these dietitians and they'll tell you exactly what to eat that's good for your body. And yeah, yeah. Maybe he eats for his size. So Keenan's just <laughs> asked his doctor, how do I look almost like shit? <laughs> I don't want to look like shit I want to look almost like shit How do we do that? How do I look just good enough? Salute to Keenan Keenan's just like Look, 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 look I just want to be fit enough to be in shape But fat enough to play Charles Barkley All right? Yo, what if he's just committed to the roles? If he gets too skinny He might not be able to wow. play these certain people Wow Yo, we got to no, really for real, salute man. Keenan, Shout out bro. to Keenan Thompson, man. It's very, very impressive that you won Burger away and never got there and you were the star of Good Burger. You know how hard it is to Burger. not want to eat a fucking hamburger when you're the star of Good Burger? Burgers must Who not have been that good. Who the star Good Burger? Who, Cal? Oh, yeah. Keenan and Cal! It was both of them. Yeah. They were a duo. I know, but don't make it just seem like Keenan was on. I see he's one of the stars. He was a star. Uh, Keenan and Kel. Damn, yo. Right. Yeah, damn, Very, yo. Very yo, you get yeah, your yeah, decision yeah, making is yeah. fucked up when you're on your period, yo. I mean, you know, we talking about breakups. Real talk, Come man. On. I'm on my period. I said, you're okay. about to. I think it might be here. Yo, don't talk about period. That's A lot of my ketchup on that burger. Yeah, word up. Don't do that, yo. <laughs> nah, nah, you brought up your period. We talk <laughs> about burgers and you start talking about period, yo. Don't tell us how you keep your men in Philly by putting a little period blood in their food. We won't hear that what? shit, Taylor. Yeah, so That's crazy. All right, this is a good segue into shit you won't care about next week because we won't care about Taylor's period next That's week because it won't fact. be here. I can't wait till that shit is gone, yo. It's now, not even here. We can, we can, I'm already tired of it. <laughs> Do you think... Yes. Two things about the fight. Do you think Wilder's team was wrong for throwing in the towel? No, not, I think they should have thrown it in earlier. Do you think Wilder's wrong for firing his trainer? 
Did he fire him? What? Well, uh, well, Which I, one? Yeah. Uh, I think Mark Brunel. I think he fired he the black go. trainer. Mr. Black History Month, Mr. I, Black Power, not, Mr. Don't, don't Black quote me on that. fired the black trainer who was trying to save his goddamn life. Don't quote me on that. This could be some Elizabeth Warren shit, but I heard. Oh, come on, yo. First, I think I heard yeah. that somewhere. But, yo, he could be permanently injured for the rest of his life. Like, yes. Listen, Tyson Fury is 275 pounds. That's another thing I, I heard his father talking about. He said uh, Tyson would always want to get down to like 250 because he wanted like the body of a boxer. Mm -hmm. And his father was like, you're not built to look like that. He basically like, you're not built to look good. Yeah, you're yeah, built yeah. to be a destroyer. You're built to look like Keenan. You're built to fit look fat. like Ke You're fit fat. Fit fat. You're fit fat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, Keenan, if you don't drop a fucking exercise line. <laughs> called fit fat. Called fit fat, bro. <laughs> the little fit bit. <laughs> the fit bit is chunky, but, but not it don't too fit, chunky. It don't fit. It don't fit too much. <laughs> <laughs> it fit like a Chanel bracelet, like it's open at the bottom. <laughs> fit fat. For so, real. So... <laughs> A fit fat bit would be so fucking funny. Tyson fit fat fury. It's it, no the fit fat bit, right? It only counts the calories you consume. That's it. <laughs> not the ones it's you not burn. the ones you lose, <laughs> bro. Come on, Taylor. And right, you know and I mean? right when you about to Taylor eat, Taylor can't even laugh. A right fucking tampon about to shoot out like a harpoon. <laughs> <laughs> right, right when you about to get to that to that to that uncomfortable calorie intake for the day, that's when it starts beeping. <laughs> but does it beep, or does it start breathing like no, fat goes, people? No, no. It goes. <laughs> 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 it reminds you what you're turning into. It reminds you, Bro. you too could be a trans cow. Relax. <laughs> <That's All right. laughs> Yo, so his father said when when Tyson's at 270 pounds, yeah. he punches like a fucking beast. We saw, and we saw, and so it was a different. It was a different game. I don't know how we got to this though. It oh, was, I, uh, I was, it was shit, shit you won't care about next week. Uh, last thing oh, about fire and chainer. Yes. The biggest bullshit that that Wilder said was, and I hated this because if you don't make excuses, we we honor you because you you gave it your everything. That's right. When you make excuses, now we don't have to honor you. And, and he said, my 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 costume weighed forty pounds. Yeah, that hurt. Forty pounds. This guy is one of the greatest living athletes. Yeah, that hurt. In top physical shape. He can't carry 40 pounds for 10 seconds? That hurt, man. You know why it hurt? Because he's blaming Black History Month. What was he saying? He blamed Black History Month. That was a Black History Month costume. So you're oh, basically saying, I wore this for y'all. Wow. <laughs> and, and lost. Wow. Because I wanted to celebrate Black History Black Month. Black History Month, bro. Like, I didn't, I, I, that, that act, I, I'm going to be honest with you, I don't believe he said that. Really? I haven't seen it anywhere. We haven't seen no video of it. <laughs> haven't heard no audio. That's just something that came out. I don't believe he said that, yo. I ain't seen no tweet about it. And I ain't seen him saying on Instagram. I don't believe Deontay Wilder would go out like that. I refuse to believe Deontay Wilder would blame losing on his 45-pound costume. 40 pounds? And let me ask you a question. If you're Tyson Fury for the next fight, do you walk to the ring holding two 20-pound dumbbells? Ooh. That's what I would Or do. a 40-pound kilt. Or a forty pound, forty pound kilt. Any from Irish? For, no, he's uh, okay. He, never mind me. He's uh, well, he's an Irish <laughs> traveler. Okay, known as a gypsy, but he's from England. So what do gypsies wear? Uh, Whatever gypsies wear, get a forty five pound one. Forty five pound. Just carry a Winnebago. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> carry a forty five pound <laughs> Winnebago around your neck. They be loving that fucking Winnebago. Oh, bro. Yo, you come out dragging a Winnebago. That's yo! it. Tyson Fury come out dragging a fucking Winnebago, bro. bro. We should be Ooh. we should be Don King in this shit. We dog. should be Don King in this shit, man. Damn, we got to get into fight promoting. Uh, do you think people have a problem? This is shit you want to care about next week. Do you mm -hmm. think it's a problem that people are selling Kobe uh, merchandise on eBay from the memorial for for insane prices? Like the the Kobe, they have a Kobe memorial bundle mm -hmm. that goes between three thousand and five thousand dollars. You get the official Kobe T shirt from the memorial, mm -hmm. um, and he, the guy sold it for two thousand twenty five. And people were selling tickets for either $24 or $224 each. Hold on. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And, but the money went to the Mama Foundation. But do you think people are wrong for uh, selling the merchandise? If they donate the money, no. I don't think they're wrong for it. Even if they don't donate it. Really? Bro, it's America. It's capitalism. It's capitalism. We live in a capitalist society. Something has value. You sell it. You I mean, people were selling like Twin Tower picks like weeks after. Bro, are people buying them? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, yeah. do I think it's, I wouldn't even call it tasteless. Would I do it? No. Because to me, if I went to the memorial, that means Kobe Bryant means something to me. 
Yes. And I know a lot of people wanted to be at that memorial. They got in. They got the memorabilia. They got the T-shirt. Like, they should hold on to that. Yes, For I you agree. to be able to sell it lets me know that it didn't really mean anything to you, so why are you here? Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I agree. But I'm not mad at the people that are selling it. Like, they don't have any attachment to it. And b- by the way, if I spend five thousand dollars, you're profiting $1, off of it. Are you profiting off of the death of somebody? I think that's what it is. Profiting again, off of the death. What is is we, that okay? We had to talk about it. Monetizing tragedy. What was CNN doing when they played the memorial service, bro? That's a great what point. What was BET doing the when the news they had monetizes mo- tra- uh, tragedy? They, BET had Mark Lamont Hill and Jamel Hill hosting the whole thing. They did a whole special. So like. Everybody monetized. And you were selling strategy. commercials on that special, you weren't were you? Selling commercials on that special. You had an ad team that was calling up Target and calling up Applebee's and saying, "Hey, would you like to buy a spot on the Kobe Memorial? What do you have planned? Beyonce's the opening singer. Oh my uh, God, we, that we have, we have remarks from Rob Winkler and Shaquille O'Neal and Michael Jordan and uh, Alicia Keys is going to play Beethoven's Moonlight Sonata. Vanessa Bryant is going to talk. Can I say something right now? It's just a, it's a it's a podcast. So, yeah. Yeah. We can't have Taylor on her period here anymore. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just joking. Uh, no, no. We are so fucking fortunate that we get to do something ethical for a living. It's subjective. Like, at least for me. Like, for a living, we get to entertain, make people laugh, make people think, and yeah, yeah, yeah. give people, like a nice chunk of distraction in a day that might as well suck. There are some people whose job it is to sell ads on the fucking Kobe Bryant Memorial, dude. And like, now, that's got a way on you, B. Like, I, I, I did watch them. I didn't watch the Memorial on BT, So I don't know if they had ads or sponsorships. I did watch it on CNN. They didn't break for com- commercials, but it doesn't matter. Cause you can have blocks around it. Yes. You know what I'm Brought saying? Brought to you by Colgate. Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, listen, I can't even say it's unethical. I get what you're saying. I just think that's just the world we live in, B. Like, you can't, you can't help it. Yeah. Like, the news says, if it bleeds, it leads. Like, that's what the news is based on. I accept it. I guess what I'm saying is I'm just grateful that we get to operate around it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But we report on shit, too, though. You know no, what I'm we report on things, but it's our choice to talk about it. We give opinions on things. We yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. to. We don't have to talk about anything. If we don't want to talk about something, we don't do it. Yeah. We're not doing it for the sole purpose of selling an ad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Matter of fact, we were doing this podcast before we had any ads, and then companies approached us and they say, hey, we noticed that a lot of people listen to your podcast. Yeah. We would love to sponsor your podcast. And then we go, okay. Yeah, it's a fine line. I don't know exactly what that fine line is, but I get exactly... What you're saying, I understand it. Yeah. Um, news you won't care about next week. Coronavirus, baby. They say it's spreading. What? If you're not going to put your lips on the microphone, Taylor, because I'm not trying. I want you to produce in real time. What Go. did you say? Go, say it. What's this attitude, yo? It's called... <laughs> what is it? Bloody Mary. What? It's called Crimson Tide. What? It's called Red Rover, Red Rover. Wherefore art thou, Red Rover? Wherefore art thou? That's not what it says. What it says. <laughs> no, that's, that's fucking Shakespeare, bro. <laughs> Yo, Rover, I did Lasty Spear. <laughs> that's what I just did just now. I don't want to mention that. His parents weren't mentioned in the memoir. That's not true. Oh, because he don't, he don't, what, it's they not true? They were they mentioned. They were there, but they weren't. Shaq shouted them out. Rob and Lincoln shouted them out. No, no, no. I'm talking about when they did the pictures and everything. Pictures of what? Kobe with his parents. Because he, he had like an estranged relationship with yeah, them, right? I know, but still. like. Right, let me tell you how lies start, right? First, people said, why weren't Kobe's parents there? Kobe's parents were right there. Okay. So his mom and right dad, there. his okay. sisters. But no, people yeah. were saying that initially. Like, why yeah, Kobe's parents were there? That's what they were saying. Then they was okay. like, Kobe's parents didn't speak. Yeah. Maybe they didn't want to. Maybe they didn't want to. That's their child. That's They're not child. public speakers. I'm That's shocked right. Vanessa went up. I'm shocked Vanessa could go up there yeah. and um, let those I bars run. I'm not speaking. I'm just saying, in general, they didn't put them in the pictures. None of that. Like, you didn't see no What pictures? Really- why you focus on the negative? What pictures? Why are you focus on negative instead of all the positive that came out of this? The shit people don't care about. I'm going to tell you some other pictures I ain't see. What's that? The other people that died on that plane. Oh, no, okay. shit. It was a helicopter, but that's oh, all good. Oh, you're right. Of course, but it was about Kobe at that moment. That... So you so you like basically 
saying get your own memorial. Them. That's what you're trying to say. You're trying to say get your own memorial. Wow, that's fucking crazy, bro. Yo, you and your period. I don't like this tale. Yo, this tale is different. Is this you your first period, yo? Wow. Have you times your periods around the podcast? Real talk. His bucket is ready. This is full. This shit is crazy. This bucket is full of chums. Muddy. You know what I mean? It's dangerous right now. You throw this off the side of a boat when you want to attract sharks. <laughs> Yo, for real, Taylor. I'm not playing around, dog. All right, things you won't care about next week. Coronavirus. Yo, they say it's coming, they bro. They say it's here. I didn't know there was 57 cases in America. There's what? 57. I, did, I found this out this morning, bro. 57 cases in America already. And that's not including the Chinatowns? Whoa. Because <laughs> let's be honest. None of us know what the fuck going on in China. I don't know where it's at. I don't know where it's at, bro. Yo, we need to have a serious conversation. What do you mean we're close to Chinatown? Chinatown's everywhere. There's always a Chinatown. There's a Chinatown in every city. Every city. I am saying right now. Yo, this is not a game. This coronavirus shit is not a game, bro. Is it? Bro, this is how arrogant Americans are. We don't think it could fuck with us. It feel like Ebola. It feel like we remember we was all up in arms about you. No, of course, it, of course, of course, it don't feel like a bowler to you, trans Asian Chris Morrow. Yo, Chris of course, this is of course nothing, it's a pandemic. Bro. Come here, Chris. Chris. Said you want to talk about the pandemic? Tell us that about is Ebola. Tell us I about mean, coronavirus. Coronavirus. Now, all keep right? in mind, in case you're just joining us, Chris is our resident trans Asian. He's married to a beautiful Asian woman. He has two beautiful Asian Chris, you're daughters. Chris, in front of all the all the cameras, man. Have you not been to the podcast? <laughs> Chris, 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 is our, Chris knows all things yeah. China. Come right here. Come right here. <laughs> hit, his drop, hit his drop, Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> hit that drop. Hit the drop. We don't have time for this, Chris. We don't have time for political correctness. Hit, hit that the drop. drop, Taylor. Hit, hit that fucking drop, yo. Hit that fucking... Dun, 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 dun. Uh, Chris, tell us why the coronavirus yeah. is not Ebola. Uh, because it's already surpassed what Ebola was. I mean, okay. the, the problem is it's mm. probably much worse than whatever China says it is. If China says 70,000 people have it and 2,000 have died. That means 200,000 have died and 500,000 people have it. Why yeah. are you saying that they're that underreporting it? Severely. Why? Why? What, because what, they what, think what that be everybody the, looks similar and they don't know if it's the same that, case or what if would it's be the different benefit cases. Of that? There's the way the Chinese operate. They lie. They try to underreport stuff. They try to downplay stuff. They yeah. never want there to be a national tragedy, a national situation, because they're worried about the whole country falling. Apart. But if you don't right. know how bad something is, you can't properly fix it, though, right? True. Now, I'm not saying it's the right way to handle it. It's the wrong way to handle it. It's too, like, I mean, the, the city where it started in Hunan is a city it's bigger. It's 11 million people. It would be, yeah. like, the second biggest city in America or whatever. And for a month before they even addressed it, you had... People, millions and millions of people screaming out of the city every day. Lights, rain, everything. Mm -hmm. So the problem is even if they get it under control in China, now it's in Iran. They have yeah. a big outbreak in Iran. They have a really big outbreak going on in Italy right now. Cut down 50, a, a suburb of 50,000 people. No one can come in and come What? Out. Oh, yeah, in Italy. It's How do you get it? Well, it's spread very easily. And the biggest problem... With how it, does it spread? Like, we know how to get it's AIDS. It's the same shit. It's they tell you, wash your hands, use hand sanitizer. But the problem with this as compared to other viruses <clears throat> that have spread is you can have it for two weeks, not show any symptoms. And, and then, boom. be a spreader. So yeah, 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 You might not even feel bad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a big one. It's like herpes. It's a big one. So yeah. the, other, the other thing you've got to think about is for the last month, forget about the medical ramifications of it. Yeah. For the last month, no one has gone out in Beijing, outside, shop, spent money, won the factory. Whoa, Ooh, stop the economy down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All these major cities in China where the vast majority of the shit that we get produced, that's all coming from there. No one's going to work. We haven't felt it yet, but it's going to hit us soon. Ooh, America needs that humbling, bro. So we're about to what humbling? That humbling, bro. America needs that humbling because it's going to be fucked up. Because think about it. you gonna be, First of all, America, a lot of us don't know how to do shit. You don't, you know don't how to think we can get food? someone else to make a shirt? What do you mean? You don't think we can go to some other country get and get how a you shirt? Gonna eat? If you got to stay in your house for a month, you can't call Uber Eats because you might bring the fucking virus in. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> exactly. I, I <laughs> thought you're like, what are we going to do without Chinese products? No. You're talking about what are we going to do when we're inside? If you got to stay home. Well, it's like, so they say that, the, for instance, the surgical masks that you see everybody wearing, yeah. they say that's not worth it. 
That doesn't do anything. I it's knew bullshit. it wasn't worth shit this whole fucking time. I fucking knew it. Mask. I don't even That's know what that is. What's a what? An N95 mask. Is that like Disney Plus? <laughs> yes. It's, it actually has a filter. So I already went in, I guess, late January and bought my N95. Why don't you, you didn't tell now? nobody. And you didn't anybody. tell anybody about it. Have you ever so fucked 10. unprotected with the mask on? Oh, yeah. Okay. But for instance, I went online last night to try to get an N95. And they sold out? can't get them anywhere in the world. You Sold can't even out. get the cheap surgical masks. Anymore. They want us to get this fucking virus, yo. They want us to get this virus. Say what? Where's the vaccines? Where's you know, the vaccines? You know the yo? virus was made in a lab, right? That's so what they say. It has to be. The biggest Because all the vaccines are out now. Yeah. The biggest bioweapons uh, facility in China is where? Wuhan. Wuhan. Got and you all in check. One of the theories is, is they perform experiments on animals in this facility. Right. And you're supposed to cremate the animals at the end of the experiment. Except we know that in China, unfortunately, there's a black market for all these Say it, Chris. Animals. Chris, yeah, say it. You true. have permission yeah, to say true. it. You are part Asian. So yeah. the theory is... Say it. You didn't say, say it. it. Say it. What did I mean, they I'm do? I'm talking about dogs. I'm talking about everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, 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 what do, do, do you think? Chris? What? what do you do with those things, Chris? What do you think? What do they do with those things? Unfortunately, there's a theory that instead of Cremating it like you're supposed to when you perform experiments in the lab. They sold the meat. They might have been sold on the black market. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And that's how oh my it God. spread. And the theory is that if you look on the Chinese end, who's handling the uh, response? It's the general in charge of bio. Just give me the GMO meat, man. See what I'm saying? I would much rather have my meat full of GMO than fucking coronavirus. coronavirus. Come on, man. I mean, look, oh, I hope it's Ebola. I hope it's Chris, Zika. Chris, I hope it doesn't I'm be honest with you, We bro. forgot about Zika. See, we forgot yeah, about Zika. There have been a lot of these pandemics that are big news. Yeah. Chris, for, Chris for yeah. get your fucking people in check, bro. Working. Get Here's your the thing. people in they check, They have bro. to create the cure when they create the weapon, right? Because I, I, I think World War Three is coming, mm. and they, I think they're gearing up for it. And they created some fucking shit that got out of their hands. So I would think that they would have the cure because they would have to know something like this could happen, right? Maybe. Or maybe we knew that World War III was coming and we got to cripple the Chinese economy. How do we do it? We release some virus that's going to take maybe. motherfuckers out. Maybe. So now you've got a few less, few maybe. million less people. Maybe. Or you're China and you had this one child policy where you can only have one kid. Yeah. And now you got all these men that are of age to get married, but no women for them to marry. So maybe you got to thin out the population by releasing some virus is going to take out all these people. So you thin the fucking herd, baby. I agree baby. with you, bro. I'm going to tell you something, man. I really, okay. People, not, not, people, people front, like, yeah. yo, nobody wants to like put two and two together, but like, think about the last big plague, right? The black plague, medieval call, times yeah. in Europe, right? Yeah. What followed that? The Renaissance. Thanos is right. And they called it the Black Plague. Why was why is that? Because at the time, you know, black was well, still to this day, but black people were looked down upon. We were no, looked at as the plague it of the earth. You black. I'm going somewhere with this though. Oh my bad. Because I think <laughs> in 2020, sorry. hey, I'm sorry about the that. The Americans <laughs> created the coronavirus. Ah, uh, where is Corona made? In Mexico. Come on. Oh, I think Trump come named on. it before he knew no, where it was from. To kill a virus, yeah. didn't have the same ring to it. It don't have it. You know Mezcal virus, nah, no. Nah, nah, nah. Corona, coronavirus, son. Woo. Pass me a limes. Woo. Get a coronavirus. Just give it to the Mexican. I mean, give it to the Chinese. Yep. Chinese get mad at the Mexicans. What? Now you think they're that, fighting you got each a whole other? Thing going. We don't got to fight come them. Come on, no more Mexican Asian fusion restaurants. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Not think about that. He got a good point. Because who is who is making all the Chinese food? Say it. Mexicans. Coronavirus. <laughs> Brilliant idiots, ladies and gentlemen. Brilliant we did idiots. It? Did we do it? <laughs> Chris just left. Chris Brilliant. just left. I think Chris we got just him. walked I think we away. Did. I think we, we did. got him. I think we, we, did. we went too far. It's the Brilliant idiots, baby. It's hey, the Brilliant Nick idiots. Chris's if go away song. Listen, <laughs> if it if it sounds go away song. If, it, if, if you don't have a smoke bomb sound, if it sounded smart, if it sounded stupid, it was supposed to. That's how we do. Now, things All we won't right. care about next week. Harvey Weinstein, guilty. Yes. What do we think? He's guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. You know what I mean? We should have put Bill Cosby under what a fucking idiot. Bill wow, Co what happened? Bill 
posted from jail. He had his publicist post that what's happening to Harvey Weinstein is a travesty and it's injustice. Bro, you got to know when to stand down. Come on, Bill. You got to know when to stand the fuck down. Come if on, you're trying Bill. to portray on, the, 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 the perception of not being a rapist, Bill, Come on, Bill. Don't come to the defense come on, man. <laughs> of, of somebody who got just as much rapes under their belt as you. Come on. Come on. Yo. Both of y'all can't be innocent. Come on. Yo. Come on. Stop, man. Come on, yo. Stop. So No, nah, we're not going to care, though. You think Weinstein gets jail time? Uh, maybe. I don't know. He's one ugly man. Who, Harvey Weinstein? <laughs> I don't know how any sex could be consensual with someone that ugly, bro. You I'm would... really, I'm, oh, I'm literally looking at him and I'm like, who would agree <laughs> anyway? Like, so, Do you it, see what he was offering? What was he offering? Fucking big time movie roles. Oscar nominated movie roles. Blockbuster pictures. Come on, man. Bruh. I'm just saying. Bruh. Eh. You would? No. Let me see when he's younger. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let me see. Oh, my God. Look at him as an old man. Though. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, but that don't count. As young, yeah, he's he too He don't young. count. He wasn't but powerful But look then. at that guy right there. Yeah, man. I'm sorry. You rape. Yeah. <laughs> I I'm don't care you, so, yeah, what the girl yeah, said. Yeah, that has yeah, got to be right. Yeah, I mean, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, God. Yeah, what a hideous yeah. looking fucking human Any being. Any woman that ever gave him consent, we need to lock her you up. You lie? Yeah, you blind. Yeah. You must be. Yeah. Is Helen Keller fucking yeah. you? How the hell are you getting yeah, laid yeah, ever? Yeah, man. You better off for an Oscar. Yeah. In a roll. Let's uh let's end let's end um <laughs> Oof. things you won't care about next week with Dion Cole. What Dion do? Dion is upset. Uh, because people were making fun of his bell bottoms. Dion, Dion came to the NAACP Awards with some bell bottoms on. He and I'm not going to lie, at first I thought Dion was joking. Yeah. And the reason I thought Dion was joking, because Dion is a comedian who I find very funny. Yep. I did not think that Dion had thin skin. How much do you have? Because I am not, I cannot listen to the whole 15 minutes of this shit. No, no, please. Please, 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 please. please, please, please okay, please, let's please. hear it. This is Dion Cole. He, I thought he was joking, right? Yeah. Until I saw him go on Instagram and do a 15-minute rant. Let's hear it. The part that I'm tripping over about this is the hate that I have been receiving because I wore a bell bottom velour velvet suit has been unreal. I've been told that I've been called up. I've been told I'm going to get my ass whooped. My cousin told me that women like, yeah, you ain't shit no more. You was my favorite comic. You not no more. My have denounced me from being funny. Why are comedians so sensitive, bro? You kind of need the sensitivity to create the comedy, man. <sighs> I know it's he should know he should know better than come than to talk on it though. Like, yeah, usually you know, comedians can take a roast well. He must have really went through it online, bro. Here's the problem. Maybe he you, was insecure about them. You just said the key word. What's that? Online. Online. I think that if a comedian was getting roasted to his face. By somebody else, he's in his element. Yeah. He can take that fucking microphone. He can give him them jokes back, light his ass up, yeah. light these motherfuckers up. Yeah. It's the fact that you can't see these people. And I think it takes away your superpower, right? You're a comedian. Yes. So if I'm clowning you online, mm. but I'm Dion Cole and I'm sitting at home, I don't know what you look like. Mm. I don't know what your profession is. I don't mm. know what you do for a living. I don't have any material. That's right. I don't have no sauce material. You got to so have you. You handicapped yeah. me. You crippled me. So now I just feel helpless. Yeah. So now I just got to get on fucking line and cry. Yeah. Now you can never cry. No, never be man, affected. No. You know what you got to do? You got to wear bell bottoms for the whole next week. You got to lean in. You got to lean into it. You're the bell bottom guy now. I never looked at bell bottoms as gay. Say what? I never looked at bell bottoms as gay. Were they gay? No, not that I know of. I back bell bottoms was the shit back in the day. Yeah, you were cool if you had bell bottoms. Bell bottoms in the afro, you was getting all the pussy, all of it. Yeah, man. So I didn't look at it as crazy. I just, I, I, I don't like to see that. That bothers me when I see comedians that fucking sensitive. You're a comedian, but I under, I, I understand why Dion felt so helpless in that moment. But I promise you, there's not a motherfucker alive. Mm -hmm. That can piss me off enough to take my phone, go live, and start yelling at that motherfucker. Never? No! No matter what. You never seen me do it. It's not happening. And I've had some times where I've wanted to. <laughs> okay? But that does absolutely nothing. All right? There's been plenty of times I wanted to open this goddamn phone, go live, and say, fuck all of y'all. Yeah. Suck my dick. <laughs> okay? But I have not done it. You know why? Because I got a fucking therapist and I got people that I can vent to. All right? And I got this goddamn podcast and a radio show. 
but you will not see me open up my motherfucking <laughs> yeah. phone, go live, and scream at that shit. I'm not showing weakness like that. Yeah, it does show weakness. You think that they're going to have sympathy for you, Dion? Yeah. Now they're going to double down on the F word. Now they're going to run after Come it. On. Yeah, yeah, They're going to yeah, double yeah. down on the maggot, baby. Yeah, Come they're going to double down. Now, and now they really think you a maggot. Because you're... Because <laughs> you're crying. Yeah. Yes, man. Come on, man. Don't That's do that, interesting. Dion. So going live is almost like an admission. Going live is showing everybody they got to you. And We grew up in the era of never let them see you sweat. Never. Now it's like never let them see you tweet. Yeah. Never let them see you go live. Yeah. When you got some shit going on and it's bothering you and you've getting pushed to that limit, go talk to somebody. Don't go on your fucking phone. I don't give a fuck. Just don't do it. You look stupid. You 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 never win. You're not gonna get sympathy. Yeah, you might have some people that tweet you and be like, "That's what I'm talking about, Dion." These people are hateful, whatever, whatever. Yeah. But it's gonna be way more maggots in your comments, bro. <laughs> it's gonna be way more maggots in your comments, bro. And why do you think that is? What do you think it is about? What do you think it is about like people when we see someone do that? Do, does it? What does it look like? To I us? Got, it's the same reason that when I can't speak, I can only speak for myself. Yeah. When I was in school. Yeah. And I was letting these jokes fly and I was teasing you. Yeah. Oh, if it's getting to you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Twist the knife slow. <laughs> slow. Oh, you, you pussy too? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you stink and you pussy. <laughs> oh, you sneakers whack and you pussy. Like, I was a fucking terror. I would push you to that limit. I wanted to see you bug the fuck out. Because right. that made us all laugh even more. Right. So that's all it is. Social yeah. media. And by the way, Dion Cole is somebody. He's on Blackish. Yeah. He's got the Netflix special. You know he's on the road. He's making money. Yeah. If me, regular old Joe, sitting in my motherfucking Can him. mama's house, can yeah. piss you off. What is the thing about energy, right? Energy's yeah. never lost or destroyed. It's merely transferred from one party yeah. to the next. So if I feel miserable and bad, I want to make you feel miserable and bad. I see you on fucking line at the NAACP Awards with your bell bottoms. Yeah. Hold up. Your life is so fucking good, Dion Cole, yeah. that you step out in bell bottoms? You can just, you can wear whatever you want from any era? Who the fuck do you think you are? You maggot? You know what I'm saying? That's I'm telling you. That's what people think. Oh, you're not even trying to go with the flow? You're not participating in this group think uh, that, that we all are participating in? It? Yeah. You're not wearing what everybody else is wearing? Who yeah. the fuck are you to be original? Yeah. Who the fuck? Fuck are you to try to be authentic? Who the, why is your self-esteem so high, Dion, that you're the only nigga here with bell bottoms on? Oh, I'm going to roast your ass up. I'm going to light you up because I'm sitting around miserable, fucked up, angry, bitter. I got to I gotta pass some of this energy to you. And yeah. guess what? 15 minutes, you got on Instagram Live telling everybody yeah, how nah. fucked up they are for getting at you. They yeah. won. They fucking won. They won, Dion. They won. Uh, Let's pay some bills and come back with Ask an Idiot. We'll talking about winning. Get your dicks hard, guys. Hey. Um, we've spoken about this company on this podcast before. I'm glad that they are officially on board. Blue Chew, okay? It's this simple. Give your girl, your wife, the girl that you want to impress the night of her life with the hardest dick that you've ever had. Okay, same active ingredient that's in uh, Viagra Cialis. It is FDA approved. This is Blue Chew. We're all on it. You know what I mean? Alex even said it made his dick grow a quarter of an inch. Wow. Yeah. You got a little extra boost. Blue Chew. You noticed that with the naked eye, Alex? You... Say a what? A quarter of an inch? Oh. I measured it to be a quarter, but I'm a little bit got generous you. with Alex's dick measurements. Got you. Yeah. And we use a regular ruler, so it didn't get the curve in. Whatever. It doesn't matter, guys. We have a very intimate friendship. I understand. Anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah. Guys, Blue Chew is not a game, okay? You take that sex life to the next level. You stop playing games. Listen, if you're one of the guys, you like to bust quick. And by like, I mean you accidentally bust quick, okay? You need to run it back. I don't run it back anymore. I'm 36 years old. But if I need to run it back because I did something embarrassing like bust quick... If I did an oopsie, I'm sorry. You know what I do? I pop that blue chew. It's chewable, so it activates twice as fast as those competitors that you swallow, okay? Get that shit in the system, 20 minutes, do a jumping jack, and you are back in 
business. Hey. Blue Chew is prescribed online. Licensed physicians only. You don't even have to go to the doctor's office, wait in line at the pharmacy. It ships right to your door in a discreet package. All right. They're made in the USA. And since Blue Chew prepares and ships direct, they're cheaper than a pharmacy. And best of all, there's no more awkwardness. So right now we got a special deal for our listeners. BlueChew.com. You visit that. You get your first shipment free when you use our special promo code idiots. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. Free hard dick. How could you say no to that? B-L-U-E-C-H-E-W.com. Promo code idiots. Try it free. Blue Chew, the better, cheaper, faster choice. And listen, we thank them for sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots. All right, Charla. Back to the show. Back to the show. All right, Taylor. Let's close out with some Ask an Idiot. What do we have today on the menu? Okay. These are some oh, left we didn't for last do no time. new ones from this week. Oh, so you didn't you didn't do? Oh, what just you're fuck supposed us, to huh? Do, huh? I yeah. got you. Fuck us. Okay. Oh, so you I think see. just because your period's on that we that we shouldn't have new fresh and asking the this? Yo, week? that is kind of wild. Forgot that you forgot all would about the segment. You forgot that? Like that's fucked up, Taylor. That is fucked up. Like wow, low key. Maybe I I have an asking idiot. Where the new asking idiots? Wow. What you been doing? What you been I can't fucking up believe you, yo. Yeah, yeah, that's fucked Our up. Shit is a week old. I can't. I, we can't answer week old Next questions. Week, if you got a week we? old tampon, that should be fucked up, right? Yeah, you can have toxic shock syndrome. That's what I'm saying. I got toxic shock right now because I'm disappointed that we got week old questions, yo. Oh my god. What? I can't believe you. What? What? Them new braids and them fucking uh, freshly manicured eyebrows you got really got you feeling yourself, yeah, Taylor. Yeah, that's true. I knew you did something to your eyebrows. Did you paint them in? I hope your boyfriend finds out that your period's on on this podcast. Yeah, me too. I hope he had big plans for the week. I hope he ordered blue chew. Yo. Yeah. What if he had the chew all ready to go? He takes it and then he finds out you're on your period. Your eyebrows do look really good. I'll be honest with you. You're welcome. And- all right, let's, oh, let's, let's answer some old asking idiots. All right. It's Taylor's fault. Oh, what are your thoughts on reclining your seat on a plane? Are there any other plane, elevator, et cetera, pet peeves worth discussing? This is from at Real Wavid Dingle. Well, first of all, um, <laughs> if I, I, I I look at the reclining on the seat. Uh, but you heard about that story, right? I did. I did. Yeah. First of all, if a guy did that to my wife on the plane or my daughters, I'm going to beat the fuck out of him. That's number one. Yo, what and, a and, pussy and, that guy was, huh? You only doing it because it's a girl. I'm going to beat his ass. And then when somebody says, why are you jumping on him? I'm saying, he said, he said Allah Akbar. But then I'm going to fucking, um, <laughs> I'm a, a, the, 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 if you pay for a seat, you should be able to recline it. Sorry. Yo, I'm going to tell you something that they're doing on planes that I hate. Talk to me. They make it too many seats. Yeah. It should not be that many seats on the plane. Yeah. It should not be that many seats on the plane, yo. And, and it, I don't care if it's in first class or economy. Like Delta and on international flights, Delta has the first class seats where it's like 30, 40 first class seats. You don't like it. No. You want to be special. I want to be fucking special yeah, yeah, yeah. because it's, it's, it's. Talk to me. Planes need to be more comfortable, bro. They do. You're they, right. They, there's not enough room on planes no more, man. Like because, it's just not. Let's be honest. There was a time when. Traveling on that business or first, it didn't even feel like flying, bro. Nah. It was, it was like that was the vacation. Yeah. yeah. It was relaxing. Yeah. You take your phone, you put it in a fucking pocket somewhere. It's still one airline like that. Which one? JetBlue. I fuck with JetBlue, but Delta is good too. We're on Delta. <sighs> Delta is too it depends where you're flying. I haven't I mean, I haven't flown like the LA and shit with Delta. You go to South Carolina. That's a little yeah, that's y'all. a little trip, so you're gonna be on a little plane. Or even LA. LA you go to, you know, in LA, I like Mint Jet Blue. I haven't fl- have I flown Delta LA? I'm sure I have. It's Mint just- Jet Blue is bomb because it's cheap and it's fucking the nicest first class. Delta they got. first class is nice. Delta first class is it's legit. Nice. The international one I didn't like. It was too many fucking seats. You don't want all those people around nah, you. Nah, man. It don't feel right, man. It's like everybody's laying down, but it's like you're in like a fucking... Tiny fucking, little space. Like a, yeah, like you're all at war or something. Like you fucking sleeping in a bunker and it's like everybody yeah. laying next to each other. I don't like that shit, man. Yeah. But if you pay for a fucking seat, you should be able to recline. 100%. That's, That's on it. a plane. And I can't believe that... Um, this guy would make such a big fucking deal about this. Like, it's not like the seats go back that far. Fam, it's a few inches. Yeah. It's a few inches. It's, no, Simple it's, as that. it's not noticeable. Like, I've been, you know, I haven't sat in the economy in a long time, but, uh, you know, <laughs> when I have sat in the economy, I remember people have their seats back and you're still watching TV. You know what I'm saying? Like, it don't. it's not a thing that bothers you. It's not like they're in your lap. Bro, it's stupid. Guy's a fucking cornball. They be in your lap, Chris? Where, see, where, where are you where? flying from? Delta. Delta. Nah, Delta. To the Virgin Islands? Yeah. Delta. Any coronaviruses Delta. out there or what? Any cases? 
Chris like, fuck it. I need a Corona to go with this Lyme virus Sorry. I got. I, <laughs> what's a little, yeah. You got Lyme disease? Give me a little Corona to go with that. Bro, Corona you know and Lyme, dog? <laughs> Whoa. Yo, God is funny as fuck if Chris if, get coronavirus Chris and he got Lyme Corona disease. and he got Lyme, dog. Dude, yeah. Mexican's going to go crazy. I want to drink him. <laughs> <laughs> this white boy's perfect. He got fucking Corona and Lyme, bro. Are you yeah. kidding me, bro? Imagine Chris was cheating with a Mexican boyfriend. The Mexican boyfriend telling his boys, man, I'm fucking this goddamn white guy, man. He has Corona and Lyme. <laughs> He's what? <laughs> you mean he got Corona and Lyme in his house? No, he take it everywhere. <laughs> okay, carnal. <laughs> um, okay, now we got the fucking coronas. <laughs> we hate you for not having to ask an idiot. Oh coronas coming to Mexico. <laughs> it's coming here. I thought that's where it started. <laughs> yo, yo we gotta, that's gonna be we fucked up. Though. All jokes aside, it's gonna be fucked up with coronavirus in Mexico, yo. So nobody gonna take that shit seriously. No, they're gonna be no, like, it's man. a celebration. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, you say it's out on the streets? They're just giving it away. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to get the corona. Who you? <laughs> you asked what? what you got, Taylor? What you got, T? Um, from the real TO, he said, if the two of you weren't doing radio comedy, what would you what would be your dream job? Yeah, I'm not answering that. I don't I don't know. I just this is my dream job. I know. So if you weren't doing it, what would you, what you I haven't had another dream next hobby though? A hobby? Yes. I don't fucking know. He's saving whales or something. Saving whales. Yeah, I would do something real white feminist. Man, get out of here I'm with serious. that shit, dude. <laughs> I'd be like slinging this whales. dangalang all across the, <laughs> the world. I'd be, saving the I'd be like, yo, you can't play with plastic toys on the beach because you play with plastic toys on the beach, you kill the whales. Man, whales are good. <laughs> Give me an ask an idiot. What you got? All right. Oh, whoa. You want a real one? You want a real one, bro? You ready? Yeah. What are your greatest fears? You know who asked this? Who? Une Michelle. My greatest fears. Oh, uh, death. Honestly, death is absolutely positively my greatest fear. And the funny thing about death is, I think I was I was listening to uh, Jada Pinkett Smith and Jay Shetty on the um, I can't remember the name of Jay Shetty's podcast. Uh, on purpose I think it's on purpose great great podcast I love it but Jada Pinkett Smith was talking about the um, uh, what was the word she used it's basically about how impermanence is what she said mm. she said it's the impermanence of death right mm. she was talking about Kobe well she was talking about the impermanence of life impermanence of life so of the life. permanence of death yes yeah, yeah. the impermanence of life meaning that yeah. we all exist now and then one day we just may not. We could easily get removed from our loved ones. We could easily get removed from our spouses. That's why the coronavirus, that's why all of this stuff like that it strikes so much fear in us, right? Because yeah. it's really about having to experience what we what we perceive as the finality of death. Mm. We would not feel that way if we knew that it was truly something out there after this that was better. Yeah. That's why the whole idea of heaven and paradise. It's so intriguing to us yeah. because we feel like, okay, at least if we die, we'll be in paradise with our loved ones. Or eventually, our loved ones will join us. Yeah. Like That's what we hope. Even when you saw Kobe's memorial, you saw people referencing Kobe looking to find the nearest basketball court in heaven. Yeah. Or Vanessa saying, take care of Gigi in heaven. Like That's what we hope, right? That's what makes us feel better yep. about you know whatever's after this. So, yeah, for me, my greatest fear is definitely death because I fear not being here for my loved ones. Now, yes, yep. I know I will get to a certain age where I won't give a fuck. And I want that. Let me and get you're to, ready to go. Let me get to 90 something. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm cool with I'm cool. I promise you I'm cool with that. Let yep. me get to the life where I can see my daughters grow up, have their grandkids, live their life. They've achieved what they want to achieve. Yep. Me and my wife can clock out. I'm going to start talking like that when I get to a certain age. Yeah. It's when scary. I, when the you same see way I'm talking like, now. Yeah. yeah. At the Breakfast Club, like I'm leaving. When I get to about 80, 90, <laughs> when I get to about when I get to about 80, 90, right. 100, I'm gonna start talking that way. All right, yo. I'm out, yo. Y'all be cool. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm y'all can have this shit. Like yeah. I'm gonna start talking like that. And I can yeah. I and by the way, I can't wait. But at this moment in my life, mm. fear is de my greatest fear is absolutely death. Mm. Nah, we good. 
at that point? It's till death do you part, it's yo. It's still like, if you say death do you die first, like, you don't want to even it's it till depends. death do you part. If we're ninety Taylor, something years old, you I can't don't, get some pussy in heaven. Don't care. Like, cause she's still. If, if 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 me and my wife both make it to ninety something, trust me, when one of us dies, we'll be joining the other one soon. Yeah, it won't you know be that long. No, but it's still that. Like, damn. I'm you're kind of hating. Probably, that's probably what'll kill me. You're kind of because let him slang that dick in heaven. <laughs> let him get up there let him have a year or two of just dicking down shorties in heaven before wifey comes up there you know the rules death do you part now I'm sharing this dick well, with no, everybody in heaven black you know, men don't cheat when they dead that's like the, yo listen all jump aside that's like the guy who died in jail and he had a life sentence he died for and a he second. tried he to can, get out he's right yo low key no, he's fucking I right I fuck with that he's right yes so until death do us part if I go to heaven did you cheat no no. We parted. We parted. Now you're dead. We're back you. together. No, now you cock blocking. We got to renew don't, vows. Don't be looking at her like that. Not here. No. no. Je- Jesus, I'm sorry. I got this. Don't worry about it. Okay? Because guess what? You act too spicy. And? Hey, God, I know I know. I wanted my wife up here. Can you remove her? Yeah. It, and, it, and, it's a little bit. It's, it's a little bit much. It's, it's a little cool up here it's for her. Can you send her someplace warm? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, nah, 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 nah. You up there in heaven getting all this pussy, you realize you don't want your wife to come. You're like, Jesus, look, look what she's doing. Look, and I did, hey, come in, come in. No, I know you're busy, but look, she lied. You see her lying right now? Jesus, look. Jesus would be like, Do you think I care about lies? Would you be here if I cared about lies? <laughs> nah, but what's your greatest fear? My greatest fear. I think uh at the moment it would be um um uh, living um like maimed. So the living Lim- in a way maimed? where I couldn't do my do the things that bring me the most joy. Oh, so like if you lost your voice or some shit. Oh, like yeah, that. yeah, I lost yeah, my voice yeah, or I lost yeah, my yeah, hearing yeah. or something like that. Like something where I couldn't perform for people and and in, enjoy that um thing that I guess we just take for granted. That would really scare me. I think that would scare the shit out of me. But uh Yeah. Death. Also like my parents dying. Like my, my parents are starting to get fucking old, man. Especially my dad. No, I get it. Ugh. I don't know. I mean, the mortality of all of us is like, that's my biggest fear. I hate death so much. I can't stand that shit. Oh my God, I can't yeah. stand it. I can't stand because I think a lot of it has to do with the fear of the unknown. Could you appreciate life the same though if it wasn't for death? Um, That's a great fucking question. Could I appreciate life Hell the no. same? No way. I, to be honest with you, I don't know because I don't know if I ever cared about dying as much as I do now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but think about it. Like, if never, you didn't I, know that death was an option, we would just be such fucking assholes. Like, that's why superheroes got to go fight crime all day is because that's the only thing that makes them feel like they could die. Like, if there's no Thanos and you just an immortal being, you're going to be so bored, you're going to be an asshole. So you might as well go find someone that could potentially take you out to make you realize the importance and value of life. Yeah. I mean, they, 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 do, they say you truly haven't appreciated life until you've been face to face with your own mortality. I mean, I've, you know, I've had guns pulled on me. I've been in, you know, wrecks that could have been fatal. Like, you know, I always talk about the car wreck I had when I was in that Lumina caravan back in the day. And the, mm. the officer told me if you weren't drunk and you had a seatbelt on, mm. you'd have been dead. Yeah. Because I was so drunk, the impact didn't kill me. And I didn't have a seatbelt on, so I flew out the back. So, but I'm talking about like, I don't need that. I don't need to come face to face with it anymore to, to appreciate life. Like when I see situations happen, the Nipsey Hustle. People that I knew and they they left loved ones behind. Uh, yeah. Even my homeboy Jarrell in Monk's Corner. Just you know, uh, even when I see Kobe, Kobe was all, all of those things hit different for different reasons. reasons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Kobe because he just was doing his regular everyday extracurricular activities with his daughter and just boom. Yeah. He wasn't somewhere he wasn't supposed to be. You know, he wasn't in the hood. He wasn't in an argument with nobody. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. there was no, there was nothing that happened other than some freak accident shit and yeah. boom he, you just know you just don't exist anymore in the physical but Boof. yeah man Boof. yeah I don't even I, yeah that's my that's definitely my greatest I, I, I want to be here 
I want to be here. I want possible. to live as long as fuck. All that YOLO shit y'all be talking. You only live once and you the good die young. Shut the fuck up. Nah, All right. Man. I want to live as old as possible. I want to be 90 some 100. I want to be fucking, I want to have on Dion Cole's bell bottoms and have people laughing at me. <laughs> I want to be drooling. On my, I want to be blind like Bill Cosby at 90. I want to die. Fuck it. I'll take it Stretch all. Stretch it out. Stretch it out, Stretch man. Stretch it out, bro. What are we rushing for? We don't even know where we're going. So what are we rushing for? Exactly. <laughs> like we, yeah. don't, we don't know. Now I want to hit 100, man. I want to hit 100. I want to hit 100. I actually want to hit more than 100. Yeah. I do. Because the way we're aging, the way the life expectancy of people is. Yeah. You you might still be good at night. You know, you might still pop a blue chew and get it popping. Gang. That's all I'm saying. That's who's getting the most uh, STDs, you heard? Who? Old people. Because they don't give a fuck no more. They're they not strapping up. Okay, they fuck the 95, the Air Max 95 mask that Chris was talking about. Fuck a condom. I'm going to fucking go wrong. Wait, wait, what? Air Max 95? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever this shit, man. Fuck all that. Real talk, man. You're old. You're old. You just let it rip. Those ovaries don't work. Yeah. You're just pounding out that puss. Come on, man. <laughs> what? No, what? you're right. I'm just saying. That's what you would do. What? what position do you think old people have sex? Missionary. You think they go mish? They probably disrespect the fuck out of 69. <laughs> Which you would ask an 80 year old motherfucker to 69. Oh, I've been no, there 11 dude. years ago. Damn near choking. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 69. <laughs> 69. We, we, we passed that. Get out of here. You know I think saying? you got to go dog. dog. I think the girl's on her walker. And then the guy gets yeah. behind her, sense. right? And that then he sense. uses the walker too. So that they double sense. up on the walker and he just kind of, he just like gets it in and then just kind of rocks back and forth. They rock nah, back and forth. I think missionary would be the most comfortable position because they're both laying down. Yeah, but you know I don't know saying? if they could thrust through missionary and their knees might be I don't think it's hard. about the thrusting. So you just put it in there and let it bake? You just lay down. You know what I'm saying? This is too. But you got to insert, dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you yeah, once you put it in, like you just boom. You just, I, I think at that age, you're just happy that it's hard. Right. She's happy that it's wet. You're but how does it get wet? Do you think the guys take out their dentures and just oh rub it up against God. the pussy lips? It's possible. <laughs> Man, maybe menopause. What? Maybe menopause make you sweat? Shit, talk about menopause. Oh, menopause drives what? you up? No, menopause, it's over. It's a wrap. Lubed in. So you lube. KY. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Hit that yeah, yeah. KY, but yeah. you throw it in the dog. Nah, I think I don't what? think they can do dog. They old hips blow out. You know what I'm saying? Like how can like if you really hitting that shit right? Right. And the woman's on the walker, you might make her fucking fall. This is the walker. Yeah. She bends over. <laughs> yeah. She locks the wheels because yes. I think you can lock the wheels because you know how it's also a seat, so it don't roll. So it doesn't roll. Okay. Right. Then. The uh, the guy yeah 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 granddad up, granddad comes up behind yeah, 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 yeah. he also grabs the walker okay right I like where you going and then he just gets you know a little bit of mm. Mm. <laughs> you want mm. it let's mm. do that would be kind of hard though because you know when you get right. older everything starts to fall say what everything starts to fall oh you can't find pussy so imagine a thick all you women you out there that got pussy. big asses oh yeah that dude. ass oh, is gonna dude. drop Shrink. Yeah. gravitational pull is gonna make it drop yeah I don't have the scrimp to lift that shit up no more no oh. look like puddles I think missionary might be the best thing bro I just don't understand how they're gonna be able to move you have to use a lot of upper body strength for missionary you can't yeah, just yeah, lay yeah. on this old woman she's gonna die you think yes dude I think in, no, in those moments you probably find the scrimp what about the girl goes on top dude lays down right too old what? So well, you ever Why? see old titties? Old titties just drop. You know what I'm saying? So she'd be on top and they would just be weighing old yeah, man down. Yeah, but maybe that's so that he doesn't have to lift his body up to touch them as much. Mm, so it's actually working for his benefit. Like he could suck his titties or her titties while he's laying down. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's almost just like lifting a palm leaf and you're just like, you know? Or the side of it. The what? The side. I hate to be that I, guy. What? 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 what, 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 what That's what it's called. Hey, look at you, Google uh, senior citizen porn. Let's get a yeah, little peek, maybe. Let's see how they do it. Let's before we get off the air. Can we just see? I don't want to just talk out of no experience. And we got to see eighty years and above. I don't want no seven Pornhub? year olds. Huh? Yo, you know what's crazy? There's a lot of young, younger guys fucking old women. I That's don't want to see that. We want to see old people fucking. You know what's crazy? All of the presidential candidates are <laughs> of the age that we're talking. And they Yo, look pretty I spry. God, I thought about that last night. I thought about Bernie Sanders and his wife. Like, oh, this people? is this is this is so hot. <laughs> Hold <laughs> the fuck up. Go That's back. a whole orgy right here. Old people. 
Oh, oh it's on. Hold on. <laughs> I definitely want to live to be 100 now. <laughs> what the fuck? Hold on. Grandma getting it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she going for it. <laughs> Hold on. Nah, she These going are for old it. men? Yes. Get the fuck out of here. Press what? This person. Oh, shit. Hold on. Schultz, you got to look at this, bro. <laughs> they 69 in. We just was talking about that. They 60 fucking 90. Oh, yeah. She taking that down, OG's bro. OG's running the train. You know what? This is a good example of how women shouldn't wait to get this get this age to go through their whole phase. Yeah. Like, if you want to be this kind of freak, just be this kind of freak, man. You know, she, 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 she don't give a fuck. Yeah, but she's tired. Look at her. <laughs> She tired I'm like cool. an old person would be that. during sex, bro. She can't handle these two dudes. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Oh, oh God. Oh, shit. Oh, now she naked. Oh, God. What is it? Okay. I'm about to text my wife. We watching okay. Granny Porn all night. <laughs> this might be my new favorite shit. I did not know that they had Can you fast forward? I want to see the nut. <laughs> that shit going to come out in powder. Be, <laughs> that shit, shit going to be powdered. Like, <laughs> Oh, bro. Yo, he fuck. He take, He learned how to use the phone. His fucking grandson taught him how to use the goddamn smartphone. He's taking pictures of this shit. <laughs> oh, that's... Yeah. See, nice he, little slight thrust. That's all. This guy one of them who's too on, much. on his back is dead. He <laughs> hasn't moved the entire time. B. I yo, think he's legit yo, choked to death, son. He really might be dead, yo. He's dead. Listen, she, that pussy suffocated him. It's suffocating him. He can't breathe and do that 100%. shit. And he trying to eat pussy at the same time? Hell no. She gave him an N95. And she mad as fuck. Listen, <laughs> she mad as fuck because his dick is not hard. Soft. You need Blue Chew, bro. Get on that. Blue Chew, why are you not sponsoring this? Don't disrespect, bro. <laughs> yo, this is my new favorite shit, yo. Oh, she's moving so slow, dude. It's not Hello. even buffering, bro. You got a job. I Hold need on. all the granny porn I can motherfucking... Everything you can find. Send me oh, every you link. don't even have an ending? Oh, that's fucked yeah, up. There's no ending. There probably is no ending. <laughs> nah, you got to show... There probably is no ending. His dick's probably not hard, Joe. Listen, uh, thank you. Please send your Ask Your Idiot questions now. All right? So you can send your Ask Your Idiot questions. Um, what, do you, what do they send them to? At the Brilliant Instagram, Idiots? Instagram, Twitter. At the Brilliant Idiots? Yeah. Instagram, Twitter. Send your um, Ask an Idiot questions to at the Brilliant Idiots, and we'll answer them uh, for you next week. Um, that's it, right? Oh, this is disgusting. It, no, that's... <laughs> what, you found something else? Oh, you got some Same shit. Uh, it's just, dude, it I'm is. going down that deep dive when I get home at the crib. Here's, here's why it's disgusting. So the kids go to the bed, me Let me and the tell wife, you why it's disgusting. We'll be because at our future. You know how when women get older, they get short haircuts? Yeah. So when you just scroll through the thumbnail, it just looks like dudes sucking each other's dicks, It man. does look like that. <laughs> like, look at this shit. That... That's two guys. It looks and like she says grandpa and grandma, <laughs> grandma and grandpa Aww. with a little that good one. boy. Oh, that's a young one. One lady with her young black stud eating him alive. Oh god! Oh, what is this? Y'all tripping? <laughs> I'm about to go down a deep, deep dive of grandma coochie tonight. Nah, nah, this is just crazy. I All right, uh, listen. As always, if you listen we to this podcast, we do love you. Appreciate you. Uh, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart. You think we're intelligent. You think we're brilliant. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.